Well, well, well. Welcome, everyone. We turn down the music a little bit. I did this for the beginning, just to make sure it was nice and loud. All right, well, how's everyone doing? Welcome, welcome. Hope a lot of people are having a lot of fun playing Distant Worlds 2. It is release day! Hooray! <clears throat> okay, yeah, welcome BLX Ed. Trian Wolf, you made it. Fantastic. Dimitar is going to get through his night shift here. Good luck. Top of the morning. Top of the morning, oh my gosh! Wow. Buck, it must be Australia time for you or something. Welcome, Matthew and Donna. Oh, Donna. Oh, Donna, Donna, Donna. That doesn't... That doesn't look like a good comment. <laughs> we might have to... Might cast a speculous... A skeptical gaze towards that... VYN.FYI. VYN.FYI. FYI could mean something. Oh, they got me. The bots have got me. So welcome. This is going to be a Distant Worlds 2 stream. Kind of like a community event. That's the way I see it. It's just... Whoever's here, we'll talk about different problems people are having. We'll go through my way of playing the game. Welcome, Felix. Uh, just kind of playing and helping other people who are playing get up to speed. People can share stories about how they're doing in their current game. Um, just share in the chat. I just feel like this is just going to be a very relaxed, casual Distant Worlds 2 session. Uh, it's like a community event, really. Welcome, one gunslinger. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go, you know, very efficiently min maxi whatever. Just driving gameplay uh, so that the video content is really like super interesting. Um, it'll be interesting only by merit of this is the interaction and we'll look at things and hopefully people will have questions. Um, I, I can like start off by reporting on some bug that pe some people are having if the game is crashing if you're zooming in or zoom like on zoom in, the game can crash. Uh, this has happened to me as well, but it hasn't happened to me for a while. But it, you can slow it down, and and then it doesn't crash. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's see. I am going to start a new game. This will be a game as the humans. I think that... What did my title say? Release, stream, Q&A, and human start. Yeah, so we're going to start as the humans. I did a little bit of a poll to see what is the... Take the temperature of the room, as they say. Figure out who is going to play what. And... Almost everyone. This shocked me, actually. I was very surprised to see so many people playing the humans. It's not surprising that the humans would be played maybe as a majority, but it was a, like a very high majority. It was like... It, I mean, it was almost as high as Kim, Kim Jong Il's approval rating. That's how high it was. Super high. Over 100%. No, not really, but... It was like 80% of people said that they were going to play um, humans, which I, don't, I would not have expected that because humans, some people actually have a repulsion to playing like the normies. Oh, just the humans. Since typically humans are, are um, we don't actually have a reference for alien life, right? Our alien life would be like, oh, that's a microbe. Not very interesting to compare against. So typically what I find in these games is people just make humans the middle and they assume that sentient life would be, uh, that we're like the the average of sentient life because I guess that is like the most average, or like the most probable scenario is that <laughs> life could have been any other way in any other direction from us. They could be more aggressive or less aggressive. They could be, you know, so we just put ourselves, we don't know, we don't have any other point to refer to. So we just put ourselves in the middle of everything and say, okay, we'll treat this as the middle, go from there. So because of that, humans are usually like a more of a stale species. They're just like the middle average of all the different sharp corners where you have something like the Mortalans, which are super aggressive, and you have something like the Akdarians, who are passive and research-oriented. But everyone usually does something a little bit better than the humans, whereas the humans do everything kind of okay. Anyways, interesting. Uh, so Tur <laughs> Turtuga is going to be the Hermit Kingdom. Interesting. Welcome, Kurt. Good to see you. Puck Kidder says, curious, with it being release day, do you have to scrap your current new series? No, no, that's not an issue. We got the release build on Monday, and that's when I started building that one, or playing that one. You're considering buying, says Brent. Really want to know if ships still warp right on top of planets and stuff in the middle of the system? This bothered me about Distant Worlds Universe. Um, 
right on top of planets and stuff in the middle of the system. No, it's more 3D now. By the way, I should get a game going. So let's start as the humans. True to the true to the norm. No, actually, humans in this are a little bit more. No, no, I'm gonna go ahead and say I think that they are pretty much right in the middle. Actarians are a little bit better in terms of research. Maybe. Maybe. Um what are they? What are humans? They're they're pretty good at everything. They are they're a very strong species. I don't think that the game is supposed to be balanced, and that's one of the one of the things people talk about with um, multiplayer type issues is they're worried about multiplayer potentially ruining the balance. How's the audio balance? Speaking of balance, is everything okay? I know my voice seems to be picked up quite nicely, but is the game audio a little bit too low? Wow, finish, welcome. Uh, I've never seen Let's Play videos of the humans in distant worlds. Oh my gosh, Matthew, well, welcome <laughs> this year. It's what everyone's doing, apparently. You can see here we are the, or were the Tortugan Caterans, misspelled Caterans, I, I noticed, but we will be the uh, human, let's, uh, human streamers. Or just the content creators, maybe? I'm just trying to make this game apparent to myself later that this is the, the stream version. The content creators! Now, I think the humans are going to have a lot of room for roleplay. I mean, we haven't seen any of the mods coming yet. Obviously, it's release day. Lots of stuff is going to be coming. I think that this is going to be a really, really good game. And a lot of people are going to get very involved in it. And I think the mods are going to just flock after that. So, um, a lot of roleplay potential with the humans, though. You can go... I mean, you can take... like Because every, almost every sci-fi universe has the humans involved in it, right? If you want to take the Actarians and roleplay as them, well, you have to live in the distant, distant Worlds 2 universe. But you could take the humans and say, okay, we're going to do a Star Trek roleplay. We're going to pretend the Star Trek people had met the Actarians, and you know, you just there's so much, um, so much, <laughs> so much you can do with. So, what do we want to? What, what kind of um, government do people want me to play as? I've done democracy, and if you want my min max tip. Democracy is, I would, I would say, almost, I could almost prove that democracy is the best. So democracy is very strong as a government type, and that's why I keep taking it. Uh, we don't have the option for the technocracy, and I, I can, I strong, look, I'm a research person through and through, you know that. Te technocracy is not as strong as democracy, and I, I will stick by that. So I'll, I'll wait to see what people want me to play as, but... Yeah, humans are very interesting. You can do the the Total War Warhammer, the 40k universe stuff. Uh, Total War Warhammer. The, notice it's just in my brain mapped. Warhammer is just mapped to Total War Warhammer. <laughs> um, I can't randomize the government type, believe it or not. That's pretty funny. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> it's a monarchy. I have never played as a monarchy. I have never played as a monarchy. Actually, never. Like literally never. Why do monarchs? Get a tourism income. It's interesting. Pretty good. Ship and facility maintenance bonus. Troop maintenance. Well, they have good maintenance bonuses. They have... Uh, like, okay. Why do I say... Do, I don't even want to reveal the reasons because I'm afraid that the walls have ears and people are going to, uh, you know, change the game and make it so my, my wonderful whatever isn't as good. But it, you really got to look at, like, Republic is also pretty good because it's all about population growth. Population growth controls everything. You want more research, just grow more population. And democracy has plus 10%. That's it. There it is. I, I don't care about anything. I only care about population growth. And the only way to get population growth is with democracy or Republic. And democracy is better. There. I've said it. It's out! Tortuga's grand strategy. Here's my tip for min-maxing this game. Step one, pick democracy. Step two, you're done. <laughs> uh, why are monarchy bonuses tied exclusively to military? Well, they're not. Uh, they are. There's tourism. There's maintenance. So ship maintenance, by the way, is not this. Um, this could be broken down. Ship maintenance is a superset of the subsets of military ship maintenance and civilian ship maintenance. This is a 10% reduction to both. Um, you also have counter espionage. That's, that's actually, I, I would actually be happy to see that even higher than 10%. 
<laughs> you know, England's tourism engine. Yeah, exactly. I don't think England... There's not, like... What? Monarchies aren't really tied to. Republic. I, I don't really care too much which one we choose. But I'll, I'll just hear some of the arguments out. Yeah, Imperium of Man. Like, a lot of people are suggesting that. I just... I think it's really cool. To, there's so many different options here. Feudalism. Do feudalism. I kind of like the idea of doing feudalism because it's so bizarre. <laughs> like, what the hell is feudalism doing in the future? <laughs> So this one has negative population growth. It has all research minus 5%. It has colonist happiness minus 15%. It has colony corruption reduction minus 15%. It has a 10% mining rate reduction. It has tourism income minus 20%. And what do you get for all those negatives? There's so many negatives. Sorry, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm way over caffeinated. I woke up very early, got to work early, so I could pump out a day's work in order to get back here in time for this stream, so. Um, yeah, uh, this is terrible. Ship maintenance savings is just terrible. Uh, it's just no way to compensate for... These are horrendous negatives. But the game is not balanced. It's not supposed to be balanced. And that's that's what's the cool thing. This is... You, you don't have to be like Stellaris. When you don't have to balance all the government types, you can just present feudalism kind of in a realistic way. And then you can let people roleplay. I love that. And this is why people say that the uh, multiplayer is is like not good because if you had to balance the government types you'd ruin some of the fun of the game and i think if they are okay if everyone swears off signs a contract saying we're not going to complain about balance in the game for multiplayer then it's a hundred percent a gimme absolutely i'm for it i'm seeing a lot of feudalism things so we're going to do feudalism the hardest by far the hardest government type i don't know maybe military dictator dictatorship is Worse. Let's just compare these briefly, because a lot of people were asking me to do this as a, a follow-up series, and this is kind of makes sense if you want to role play like 40k. I think military dictatorship makes sense there. Um, mining rate goes up, tourism goes even further down, trade income goes down by 10%. Trade income, tourism income is actually pretty important to me. Colony is happy down, happiness down by 15%. Colony is happiness 15. Yeah, they're both pretty bad. I think military dictatorship is a little bit better. As far as research goes, as plus 20 to weapons, plus 10 to, to troops. There, there are a lot of weapons and troop research categories, so that is pretty good. Um, feudalism has all research, so it's effectively a 15 and, a, and a, a, 10, a 5 and a 15 here. That is... Wow. Yeah, feudalism is by far the worst one in the, in the game, but that's awesome. Let's do it. Let's choose this. Do Which um, flag should we choose for our human folk? Like, these just, these are cool flags, even. I, I think that there'll be modding ability to put even more in here. I'm not sure, but I kind of think this is the best one for the humans. Okay, um, how important is colony happiness in this? Is that something where you need to, enough to prevent revolts, or does high happiness give extra resource yields? Um, first of all, great question, Keith. Uh, I don't know the full answer. What I do know is main the main effect of it is um, income from taxes because you're typically going to set your tax rate um, at least after your colony develops enough people usually like around a million people you're going to set your tax rate uh, sorry a billion people not a million but around a billion people you'll set your tax rate to uh, different levels based on how much happiness is left on the population so you'll t target like plus 10 happiness for um, early colonies plus 5 happiness for really really like uh, super developed colonies, like over 2 billion. Um, look at that sweet save maintenance saving. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> we'll, we'll go on. Okay. So let's do this. Let's do this. Let's start with, okay, look, I'll take it to a vote. Normal, trying, normal, or agreeable. And my, I was going to suggest we do agreeable, but I, yeah, you know, I really like agreeable starts. You just start off with so many resources. It's so nice. Such a happy little place. And it's only for your home system. It's not for everyone else's. So it's kind of like a, like, like we're kind of setting up here. Um, I'm going to go back because all the settings will be saved, which is nice. Very good game. Um, if we go back to the very beginning, one thing I could do is turn up the galaxy aggression and the, the difficulty. So we can see here difficulty of gameplay. This alters the empire rates for various in-game factors relative to the player. Factors affected include colony income, corruption, research speed, mining rate, population growth, war wariness, weapons targeting, and countermeasures. So I, 
I, uh, I normally just leave it on normal and restless because whatever. Agreeable if you're doing feudal. Wow, everyone likes it. Oh, they're, they're going to give me and they're going to, I'm going to catch a break. Awesome. I, re I, I just think it's a lot of fun to play as an agreeable. If you're doing your first game, I recommend agreeable. You'll be so happy. <laughs> your, your first system will just, will just be, you'll be blowing people away. Um, now, considering our difficulty settings, uh, if we're going with agreeable, I'm, Let's at least do... Un do you guys want a lot of war? Unstable means everyone's going to go... Can they go to war with everyone? It also means, unfortunately, that the pirates are going to be more difficult to deal with, but I can tell you that my normal tactic of uh, buying off the pirates is not going to work as a feudal nation. We're going to we're gonna go right and kick them in the teeth. But if, if you guys don't mind, we'll do unstable and normal or hard. What do you want to see? I'm okay with anything. We're just here to have fun. Meantime, I'll I'll go back and change that one. But let me see what else we might might want to change. Um, yeah, we'll do starting for expansion. War good, not war bad. <laughs> Unstable. Okay, I did that right. Did I do that? Unstable, normal, good. Yeah, you get war even with restless. It, just, it actually feels a little bit more natural. You'll get a lot more wars with the settings we currently have. But war is good, especially if you're a feudal empire. Now let's actually create, we can actually do this, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I think I have gotten 12. If not, well, plus one, minus one, doesn't matter. So we can actually set these people to whatever we want. Um, I don't want to have met anybody because I'm a feudal. Have you played extreme yet? I have not played extreme yet. I've only played on hard and this current one that I'm doing, unstable. Um, so we can actually choose the races, but I'll leave those on random. It does a pretty good job picking them. I don't think we want anybody to start with better technology or expansion, but uh, this is where you can choose their their home system. So we can give somebody a harsh home system, and then like if I I can just choose them. We'll give the because I hate them so much. We'll give the Hakonish or Buscarans. I hate them both. We'll give the Buscarans a harsh <laughs> home world. Let's just see how they're how they're doing when we meet them. So let's give them... I would love to name them. Let's name them the Biscarin Ninka Poops. I don't know how to spell that, but that's phonetically how it might be. Um, no name, we'll just they'll fill in something randomly. So when we meet the Biscarin Ninka Poops, we'll know that they started in a harsh world and their life is not going to be fantastic. Uh, but isn't that so cool? We can actually name whoever we want. We can set them the race. We can choose what technology they they're gonna have. Um, yeah, <laughs> included screwing them over what their home system has. Is there anything else I want to change here? We can choose where we start. I chose that. What did I choose? Uh, do people want to see a, gal uh, a spiral galaxy? We don't have to choose that. I don't know which one I'd rather even choose here. I'll probably just leave it on random. Tortuga's already cheating by someone giving him a thousand. No, we're starting with an agreeable start too, Josh. It's worse than it sounds. But we're also choosing a feudal empire, which is bizarre. Um, if everyone's okay with that, we'll just uh, we'll just start the game. And then, yeah, if anybody has questions about how the games are going, um, pay attention for a second here if you're having any issues running the game. I there was somebody in my Discord who was having a problem crashing the game. So when the game first starts. You can kind of, when I hit let's get started, it's going to start its slow zoom in. And you might crash if it zooms in too quickly. But if you just hit um, your scroll wheel, you can kind of stop it from scrolling. Or you can hit, like, I think the delete key. Ah! Yes, we stopped it. Oh, nincompoops. Th thank you. Uh, Kur Karatikus? Karatikus? <laughs> Not sure the... Whatever. But anyways, we're we're ninja poops, ninja poops. We misspelled ninja poops. That's them, not us. Anyway, so right now I have it knows my settings from the previous game, which means that it knows I don't want them to do my research. So note that if you do this setting in any other game, before you advance time to January fourth, make sure to set your research, and you like mandatory have to set it to the early warp field experiments. Because you get a 50% discount on this, so it's really the first thing you're going to want to choose. So we're in the game! Hooray! 
I mean, let me just do the dramatic slow, uh, scroll into the planet. Which one are we? This is your planet. This is your planet on drugs. Um, to Prawa 4. To Prawa 4. Well, to Prawa 4, you are going to be renamed uh, Feudal Earth. Oh, is it one of these games where you they have a hard time with the shift key? Feudal Earth. <laughs> Great. Can't wait to see the human ship designs. Yeah, and by the way, one note, one thing to note when you're doing the ship designs, uh, I really, I, I think the ships look great. You also want to make sure if you're like really want to get a photogenic moment or whatever, turn off this. Ah, uh, there we go. That's a beautiful ship. There she is. This just shows you the um, component bays and the firing arcs and stuff like that. But, you know, it's not part of the actual ship, so if you want to see what your ship looks like, just turn it off. Beautiful. This is really, I mean, they did a great job. I think they did a fantastic job with the ships. I think they all look great. And they're so distinct, but they're all, like, believable. Well, kind of. I mean, I think that there are some issues with, like, even the Xenox ships look a little goofy sometimes. The Actarians ones really impress. Baskarns decide to give the middle finger by surviving and being on top while being a bad start in later episodes. <laughs> yeah, let's see. I, d I doubt it. A harsh start is not, is, is as it sounds, pretty harsh. Does the game have no message or button to find idle ships, or am I missing something? Goodness gracious, Chams, that is not something that's in the game, unfortunately. But typically, you can just go over and... I mean, I think that the point of the game is that you're supposed to automate a lot of things... Whether or not you or I agree with that is a different issue. Because I, I don't. I like the manual control. But you certainly can do a lot of things manually. I mean, automa automated. The game is very good about that. So let's show me my leader. Yuri Zoberia. Ruling from Feudal Earth. He has good counter-espionage skills. Not going to be very useful for us when there's nobody else out there. Ship maintenance savings plus 5%, which is... Pretty funny, considering we already have 40%. <clears throat> Excuse me. And colony corruption reduction. That's actually huge. Colony happiness reduction. <laughs> yeah, not as good. He's a bean counter. Ah, a fellow bean counter. Great. Traumatic zoom in the sun rise to the... <laughs> yeah, game over right away. So the first thing to do in the game is just, if I'm playing with a story on, if you aren't playing with a story on, then uh, you'll want to build a star, starport right away. And we will want to build a starport right away as well. But let me just fast forward so we get our our um, first little pop-up. And when you dismiss this, it will unpause the game. So what I do is I just tap spacebar twice real quick. And then that means when you hit dismiss on this, it won't unpause automatically. There's no such thing, I mean, I think in Paradox games you have this really nice concept of like continue, I mean like close, or close and unpause. That doesn't exist in this game. Everything which is dismiss is also, is essentially dismiss and unpause. But you can get around that by pausing and unpausing. It like removes that little like cued pause from the game. Ah. To the stars, blah, 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 blah. I won't read all this, but we have early warp field experiments boosted to 50%. This is always gonna happen. And I think it's always research labs to 25%. Wow, this planet is actually really good. Oh, maybe because we did agreeable. 10% colony development, which is good. 7% re sensor research, that's average, but um, scenery at plus 9% is very good. How do you know what to start mining? Very good question. Let's start with, this is a very good one, very good question. Um, what you're going to be looking for is we have no resources right now. I mean, the only thing on our planet is polymer. By the way, we, because this is not like a super serious playthrough, I don't mind using the game editor. And if you want to use the game editor, it's like built-in cheat engine. But it also, I mean, if I was to click select empire to edit, we will actually see every empire in the game. So we could, if we want, we could go over to the Boscar and Ninkapoops. I can change their name to... 
what it's supposed to be. Nincom poops. They are apparently a hive mind, by the way. So we have now cheated. We have edited that empire. We could also take away all their money. I'll take down 10,000 of their money. Ha! Suckers. You can give yourself money if you want. Welcome, Deadly Jinx. How do you know what to start mining, though, is the question. Let me not forget. Uh, so we built our first station, uh, ship. Yeah, so let's um, let's just create. Let's just give, our, give ourselves... Well, we don't need to give ourselves any money yet, but let's go over to the build order and create some scouts. Before I do that, we already have one. And let me pause because we're advancing time, but let me go over to the, the scout exploration one and I'm going to upgrade this. We, we can't edit it because there's already one. You can't edit any design if there's even a single ship in that one. So what I recommend you do is, before you build any any more, remove the weapons. Exploration ships are just, they're just not going to do any fighting for you. They're not going to do any good fighting for you. So don't fight. Don't... Like, because shields recharge and even armor can be repaired, there's almost no sense in having any weapons on an exploration ship. Any damage they do is going to be repaired by the time your main fleet gets there. Unless you really want to make the later game, like there's large exploration ships and they can actually pack a reasonable punch or defend themselves. Um, they could actually help in a fight. But the initial exploration ships, the space, the resources, like everything on them is better used without weapons. So they're just a better ship without weapons. That's okay. This is all tor from Tortuga's opinion but anyway so that saves us a lot of space which we'll eventually be using for shielding for skip drives and stuff like that when we get them but i'm just gonna save this design even though i i've all i've done right now is take off two weapons and done nothing so that means <laughs> it's kind of like a a no-op really all we're gonna do is remove capability from our ships but note that everything costs resources to build these um, Seeking Missiles take four steel and two Necrostone per. So I've saved us eight steel and four Necrostone on uh, on our ship here. So what I can do is save and exit, and then I can show all designs, and we can look at what that means as far as maintenance goes. So the, the cost of it drops down by about 120, but not by about, but exactly 120. And the maintenance down, drops down by six per year. So really, it's not that big of a change. However, it's still, like, I think it's still better. I mean, we don't need those weapons. And we're kind of also saving it so that we don't have to scrap those weapons later. Um, later on in the game, when we have other things, we're going to need to replace the weapons there anyway with things which have more... I mean, the, the, the size limitation will be our limitation, so we'll need to get rid of the weapons to fit other important things on, like shields. Uh, and so we're just freeing up the space for that now and not needlessly building the weapons that we're going to remove anyway. Um, we're just doing that now because only this first design has those weapons. Every other design we build after that won't have the weapons, so we won't be wasting that what it's going to be scrapped anyway. It's late here. Going to watch the stream or catch up tomorrow. Okay, thanks for dropping in, Karatikus. <laughs> I'll just say it like Spartacus. Boring Kobold, Hello. The only reason I'm watching this is because I want to see you play more Distant Worlds I'm in love with the game. I, I I think this is like kind of a bold statement, but I've made it at least in private. I think I'm going to make it, I'm comfortable making it in, in public as well. I think Distant Worlds 2 is going to be the 4X game, at least the 4X game for me, but maybe even like the defining 4X game for like the near future, for five years or so. I think it's just going to be like the game. And that's obviously for people who don't mind single player, but I think that it's that good of a game because it's this polished at launch we're talking about game like imagine we have to take a step back and remember this is the game at launch it's amazing at launch <laughs> who thought a game could be this good at launch it's been a long time i've been disappointed by many launches so far so okay so we're going to build a few more exploration ships but now we want this to be the exploration ship two we'll get maybe two of them because uh, we have a lot of asteroids. They're basically going to occupy all their time exploring the asteroids. Oh, look, we have the moon. I want to rename you. Let me rename you. I can only rename colonies, I guess. I did not know that. Well, 
Joke's on you, buddy. Just go into game editor. Feudal moon. Thank you. Aha! The feudal moon! Great! Are we the third? Oh my gosh, we're the fourth planet. They got us off, off by only one. And if we wanted, we could, by the way, spend time um, renaming all the planets, change it. Like, we want to make this Mercury? We can make this Mercury. We want to make this Venus? It's a rocky desert planet? That's more like Mars. We have a continental... Oh my gosh, we have a continental planet right next to us? Diameter 5500? This could be our second colony. Can you imagine? This is like the inversion of Mars, but except for it's... Like, more like if we found something like Earth right next to us. That's crazy. Uh, 4X game, Boring Kobold, is just the way to define this genre. Excuse me, the way to define this genre. Um, it's just like any kind of civilization type game, they call them 4X for explore, expand, um, explore, exploit, expand, exterminate. No, I think I have the other way around. Explore, expand, exploit, exterminate. Yeah. Okay, so let's get our, our new ships. We'll go up to 4X, because it doesn't really matter. Oh yeah, we need a spaceport. Yeah, yeah, I get it. So let's go ahead and modify our spaceport too. And unfortunately, this is gonna affect my my other things, but we don't have a spaceport yet. We can affect what this is. First thing I, I guess you wanna do is look at the weapons arcs. So I think we have some weapon arcs here we don't that are different than 180. Nope, these are all exactly 180. So then the good thing to do is at least balance the weapon arcs. So if we have a light, a long range cannon on this side, well, we should have a long range cannon on this side to suit it, right? So let's get rid of this missile and move a long range cannon to the other side. I, I like the balance approach. It just keeps your, uh, your station. Uh Oh, do we, those are the only weapons we have. I'm surprised. We don't have any medium weapons. That's, that is surprising to me. Anyway, so now we have a small one on each side. This is here and that's there. So let's put the seeking missile on this side instead. Seeking missiles, you don't need to, okay. So anything which says on the fire type seeking, you can see the very top gray bar is fire type seeking. Any one of those games, um, they, uh, any one of those weapons, I should say, they don't need to, uh, you don't need to worry about what hard point they're put at. The firing arc for these is irrelevant because they're just going to turn towards the enemy right away. Now there is still like some momentum to them and they, you know, they don't just immediately start going through your ship backwards. No, they have to fire out in that direction and then turn and, you know, they have a speed and all that. So, you know, it's not going to get, it, it could like reduce their range and stuff. It's still ideal to be firing in the direction of the enemy, but in general, I don't worry about it too much. You can kind of let them you know, just put them on any firing arc that you want. So then we have a long range cannon. Ah, this is where we want. Okay, so our long range cannon should be on these 270s. So this was definitely very inefficient. We should definitely have the long range cannons here. So we have them on the two 270s and those are the only 270s that we have. So at this point we can just put seeking missiles wherever else we want, but there's not a whole lot of space. So I'll just limit it to four, that's fine. Um, we have no shields, no sensors. Well, we do have proximity sensors, but I don't think it really matters to put those on our spaceport. Um, reason being that we're going to detect things coming towards our space station already. Are you going to continue the rat playthrough? The rat playthrough? I'm not doing a rat playthrough. I'm playing as the cat playthrough. And yes, that one's going to continue. So there's our, our spaceport. Rename the home world Caledon from House Artrades. Oh yeah. Well, I, I might do that, but I, I think this is gonna be a little bit, bit of a goofy game. So we're just gonna leave them as feudal. Yep, they kept the, the feature. All right, we're unpaused or no? So now that we have this new station, just make sure that it's all good. I think we're all good. I'm just gonna trust everything else is there. Just make sure we have a basic research lab. That's very important. So we'll build this on Earth, on feudal Earth. If you want, you can actually right control right click to where to put where it goes. Um, yeah, actually, why don't I scuttle this real fast? Because wow, um, I don't know how many resources just went down there, but ho presumably none because I just canceled. And what I want to do is <laughs> it's still blown up over there. 
Wow! We found a bug. It keeps blowing up. Wow. Can I get it to happen again? Oh, it blew up again! Oh god, no, not again! Oh! <laughs> I, I never realized you could do that, but okay. So where do I want to put this station? I think that these are so close that we're not going to have a position far enough away where people will use jump drive. So what I'm gonna do is put this as close as possible. So I'll click on the earth, right click, and build the spaceport here. Okay, so that is as close as this station can get to our feudal moon. Is it still blown up? Oh my God, it's still blown up. And then once we get uh, a station on the feudal moon, um, it won't be that much of a transit time for people, hopefully. So that one's done, and they want us to build more scouts. Yeah, I will I will build these ships. And then let's unpause and run the game for a little bit, and I'll just look at the comments. So have people been playing the game? Who have you been playing as, and are you having fun? Will I name some of the ships after people in chat? Sure. I can give you a ship name if you want. You can be uh, Boring Kobold. Tortuga, call the planet by its name. Your future descents will call it Mars. Well, this is the feudal moon. We have discovered resources. Show me. Oh, look at that. This is a problem with the game, I have to say. The fact that this guy is just... Pick up whole section. Oh, yeah, so apparently we did jettison some parts over here. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Boom! I, it's just funny to me that they kept blowing up. Welcome, Christian. A new resource has just been discovered. Where did we discover that? We might be discovering these. Yeah, we're actually discovering these from the whole section, so it's kind of a joke. Um, we're not really discovering these new resources. It's just sad that my first... Okay, now, as soon as you start investigating, like, the wrong thing, that's when I have to correct you. Right now, the explorers in the game are very finicky. They, they go and explore asteroids way too much. Way too much, way too much. So just be mindful of that. I accidentally built too many mines in an asteroid belt. I don't think that's a problem, actually. I think it's kind of good to build a lot of mines. No, we're not going to build that. That's ridiculous. That moon is pretty giant. I know, it's almost the size of our... What, do you want it smaller? Should we make it smaller? Squeaky. Squeaky. Mm. Let's make it uh, 2,000. Squeaky. Exit. There, is that better? Still pretty big, huh? It's a little bit smaller. Asteroid clusters can be super effective for mining stations. Yeah, that's right. So as soon as my explorer guy gets over there, actually, it's funny, you can't see him here. I, I want to actually have him on all the time. Yeah, it won't show me the vector either. I was hoping that would work. And by the way, these things are toggled. Like, if I go over to the research string, it's going to turn on um, exploration. If I go to the exploration tab, it'll turn on exploration window automatically. Right? Everything is currently unexplored, which is what we expect from the beginning of the game. Make the moon bigger, the Earth will become the moon. <laughs> we could do that. We could do that. It won't actually change it, by the way. I mean, once the game is set. This is set. No planets are going to move anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, by the way, we should crash research this. I highly recommend that you overutilize crash research. It is the best way to get research done. Okay, our spaceport is constructed. Now note when I hit dismiss, the game unpauses. Sometimes you don't want that to happen. That's why I do my little pause trick. Oh my goodness! Plus 19% industrial research. That's fantastic. But is that all you're giving me? Really, just Tiberius? That's 
That's not an acceptable amount. Anyway, we will build a research station here. So if I click control, sorry, click. I need to get a construction ship. Where's my construction ship? I'm gonna build the mining station and I mean the research station in a very specific spot. Actually, I, I mean, I might, I might as well build a mining station too, but I'll start off just by building the uh, the research station. I'm gonna put this a little bit to the side, but I'm gonna put them both on the same side of the planet. So I've given an order, it should be built on like basically the left side of this. And then I'll, my plan is to put the mining station on the right side so it'll be a little bit closer to the spaceport. Discovery of Fuel Earth, we've discovered carbonite, which is fantastic, that's very good. Um, we have more unknown items that are yet to be discovered, and a scientist has been created or you know generated from on Earth. Could you make the feudal Earth huge? I absolutely could. The problem with doing that is we will be impacting the game balance. Oh my gosh, this has quality 92%. That is maybe the highest I've ever seen. Oh my gosh, what is the max population on this thing? Whoa, 11 billion, oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, just to give you an idea, I'm used to seeing max population scores around five, or I mean, like five, nine billion, six billion. This is 11 billion. This is like uh, a super insane planet. Now, it's at 11 billion now, which is already insane. If we go to game editor, we can make that bigger. We shall embigify it. We'll just make it, what, five thou? So this is quite a big difference. Squeaky. Go. Oh, there it is. Jumped right on up. Now I'm going to exit the editor. And our new max population is 17 billion. <laughs> All right, just a fair 17 billion people. You know, no big deal. Bearded Phobos says, thank you for doing an episode every day. I really, I, I almost can't help myself. And uh, this is why I think population growth is very important. Um, the more people you have, the more money you make. It's pretty simple. New spy, new scientist, we already talked about that. New exploration ship, very good. I'm not very, I'm not gonna min-max too much in this game. Like, I don't care that we missed the crash research right from the get-go. Hyperspace technology discovered. Yes, that's that's quite right. And we have no other research queued, so that's not, that's not good at all. Uh, energy deflectors. No, well, yeah. Why don't we just do this very bizarre thing where we go like super military right from the get-go? So I'm going to get this. I'm going to get armor. Perfect for the next two. Research labs? Yeah, okay, I can do that as well. And then we want... We probably want to go down missiles. I really think missiles are good. You know what? No, screw it. We're going to be a kinetic weapon um, group, which means that besides this, we need to get engines. Engines are very important if you want to close the gap, because that's what... Rail guns are very short-range weapons. So we'll get proton ionization right after that. Good, so we have our research lined up for the foreseeable future. We'll crash research this if we can. And we can. Good. Can't believe I made it. Welcome, Ben. Yeah, kind of like Earth in real life. I mean, yeah, max population of 17 billion. I don't. Is that is that within our comfort zone to do twice the current world's population? Minus 45% ship maintenance. You're probably supposed to just kill everyone. Yeah. So I I plan on just building a lot of ships. We have a new general already. Oh yeah, that reminds me. We will need to recruit some troops. I forgot, what is the, are humans like 100, 100 as far as um, strength goes? What's our troop strength? You can't, by the way, it's funny, you can't see from the um, research menu. Maybe that makes sense. 120, oh wow, we're 120. Okay, good, so we're actually very competent troops. The default is, I, I would have guessed that the default value would be 100, but apparently not. So, yeah, I don't need this anymore. Galactopedia is, should be your first stop. There's no, you know, search bar. I think this is going to be a search bar. But uh, there's no search currently in this area. So this is still the first, the one-stop shop for all your your questions. Like, if we wanted to find out about 
colony taxes, it's going to tell us colony income equals total population times development level. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff here. Um, this is not exactly true, though, I thought. Oh, this is the private colony income, which then you get taxes and there's corruption. So this is not what you see, but this is what the private economy sees, apparently. And this explains why total population is just really important. Okay, we'll continue going, unpaused. So our goal is to make really good ships really fast. Um, now we have, uh, <laughs> I'm so kind of behind. We have new jump drives and I didn't bother to, upgrade, to like to upgrade anybody. <laughs> I'm gonna go to only active designs so that we don't see the obsolete ones which are being replaced as ships are being upgraded. Um, so let's upgrade this again. And it's gonna need to drop a fuel cell. I'm probably gonna need to drop two fuel cells because I'm already predicting that we're not gonna have enough energy for the um, skip drive. So we'll put this on, and there it is. We're a little bit short, so we can put a basic reactor on. That'll solve that. We still have 25 available. That's enough for one um, shield, which is perfect. So I think that's good enough. On your merry way, Scout V3. We have it automatically retrofitted, so we don't really need to worry about micromanaging that. They should automatically do that. Oh my gosh, where are you, and why are you... Okay, just go retrofit. Make me happy. Just do something, for once, do something right in your life. Feudal Earth, nice link to your Diplomacy is Not an Option series. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Johnny. And welcome. There are some biotech for crops that could allow Earth to house ridiculous amounts of people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we, in the future, could do that. But also, there's this declining population trend, so that's also interesting. Um, I didn't upgrade my construction ships. Should I? Do people want to see these designs done manually? I can just automate this, and the game will do a pretty good job of it. Um, not weapons on the construction ship though, thank you. Skip drive, put that in here, and definitely need to drop a fuel cell for a space reactor. That might be enough. We have room for one more fuel cell even. This thing is gonna have, actually have really good range. Is there anything, I mean, w what we might do is leave that fuel cell off in anticipation of getting well, I mean, we'll eventually... I'm going to take this proximity sensor off, too. I'm going to leave that space open, though, because I am going to anticipate getting at least one shield on these when I can. So let's just save and exit with the... Yeah, there's lots of space available, but we're not going to worry about that since we're future-proofing the design a little bit. So, can you briefly explain the private economy in this game? Yeah, great question, Dimitar. Um, when you're taxing... A colony, I, I can bring up this colony detail screen, which is a little bit overwhelming, and I don't know all the underlying functions here. In fact, they haven't been revealed to us. We don't, we don't, we ourselves, I mean, even people like, I don't want to speak for him, but I would say even like Larry Monty and Das Tactic don't know the exact formula that is used for this. Some of them may be, but not, at least not all of them. So right now, the private economy is what um, generates the initial income. And you can see that on the empire window. I don't know what this is called in your main economy window. Scroll down here and you see private economy. So this shows you the private economy, the private colony revenue. Um, we can do the math on this, I guess. The projected for this is 36,438, which um, our population is currently, where's our current population? Ah, yeah, 22. Five, six. So we have 2256, and then what's our development rating? 51. So let's just do the math on this. 2256 times uh, 51 is equal to 1,150. Yeah, it's not, it's not exactly development times population. Oh, here's your reproduction rate, by the way, 6%. I want, is that the same for everyone? That's what I, I want to know. Because they used to be, this used to be a big thing that there was different reproduction rates. And that would be like one of the governing things for on which race you would choose. I hope that they're all 6% since it's not shown directly in the, in the race thing. It seems unfair to have such a huge impact on the game not shown in the uh, race description. 
Oh, yeah, everyone wants to see the ships being building. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, sure. So anyways, I pulled up on my second monitor the calculator, which shows that 0.51, so basically it's divided by 2, right? Times this, or even if it's, you know, times 100 of that, so... Wait. Yeah, yeah, I mean, even if this was not 51%, but this is just 51 times 2256, you just multiply this by... You get, like, 115,000 or something like that, which is definitely not what we're seeing for base revenue. So I'm not really sure. Hey, Finish, are you still around? Can you delete these ding-dongs? Report for unwanted spam. Get out of here, you ding-dong. Uh, anyway, Starfighters in every Star Trek Space Station. Yeah, Starfighters are very good. I think they're very good. Especially for um, immobile targets like um, space sports, mining stations, fighter, sta fighter bays are very good. So I'm not sure what exactly the how this annual for this projected income works, but that's in theory what is the income. It's something basically like population times development, which is why getting development like luxury goods adds to the income, and therefore adds to your income. So then, if this is the income that the plan is supposed to make, thirty-six thousand, that's private economy. What we tax is just directly taken out of their revenue. So you can see that our tax rate is currently at 15%. This is 4K. This is, I guess, 4,466. This is a expense on the private economy because naturally, <laughs> when you take that money away from the private economy, they no longer have it. It is an expense, right? If you are taxing businesses, that money goes to the government, but it goes away from the business. Based on however much money the private economy has left, they will fund the building of new mining stations, they will fund the transport of materials, like if resources are missing in an area, they'll essentially, they'll neutralize the the demands, so they'll, they'll, they act as, as the like private economy really does in real life, they act as like the balancing force between supply and demand. Um, and money is exchanged hands for that, I don't exactly know how that works, but Essentially, people are paid to move things based on the demand. Uh, it's different in shows in the race stats. Looks to be 5 to 10%. Oh, no. It shows in the race stats. Did I miss this? Oh, my gosh. This is huge. We're talking about population growth here. Where does it show it? I must have missed this is I mean it's the most important thing it does show it oh my gosh I don't know how I missed that I I have like I am just embarrassed this is an embarrassing moment but it's been listed here the entire time so that's this is a really a big thing so they have this is okay the thing is I <laughs> this is personality and I have to say I didn't care about this um, because aggression caution and dependability I read the first three and I'm like I don't care about this Migration tendency, a simulation rate. I mean, these do have gameplay impacts, but man, they snuck they, they snuck reprodu reproduction rate in there, which is hugely important. Does private economy consume resources other than ship ships and mining stations? Uh, yes, they consume luxury goods, Ben asks. So the luxury goods have no uh, sink other than going to colonies. And then they're converted from luxury resources to um, colony development. So that's great. The Galactopedia, I, I take back everything I said. What I mean, I should have known better, of course. Of course I'm wrong and the game is right. That's not necessarily always true, but for something as, as big as this. So I, I, I kind of got sidetracked, lost my own thought there, Dimitar, but hopefully that helps with the private economy thing so if the private economy doesn't have money to like move things like my so you'll see mining ships going off and like mining for resources that you have in high demand um you're paying for those based on the amount which is listed here so you can see that mebnar which is has a small negative on on the production rate because we don't have any income of it so it's a slight negative it's we're expecting to spend money on mebnar um or i mean we're expected to use mebnar but we don't have any um, source to replenish that. This is based on our current demand. Now, 
because there's demand and there's no supply, the money for this will go up. And if you um, if you need Mevnar in your spaceport for building whatever we want to build, which is, or even when the civilian economy wants to build things, like the price I pay for a ship is based on like the re okay, let's say that a shield costs five Mebnar. Shields don't take Mebnar, I think it's reactor stuff, but whatever, a ship requires five Mebnar. If you already have a supply of that, then the cost of this will be like maybe only one credit or 1.5 or 0 0.5. I think it goes down to, does it go down to 0 0.5? I forget what the floor is. And it's different for different ones of these, but anyway, so you pay, like there's a base cost for the ship, which is shown in the, um, let's just, I, let me go to the research screen. Actually, it's better to show it there. Go over to construction. And if we go into any of these with, with ships. Okay, good. So here, if I just rest my cursor here, we can see a small colony ship has a base cost of 4,000. And a medium mining ship has a base cost of 1,150. Let's look at the exploration ship. An exploration ship has a base cost of 1,500. So you might ask yourself, then why is my construct my exploration ship? Why the heck does the thing cost 2,940? You said it only cost 1,500. Well, that's just the base cost. If you were to go and let me just add another uh, small exploration ship. Let me manually create this. And now you can see that my cost for this is 2,063. because it takes 62 steel to build this hole, I guess. Um, there's probably like a, a cost of 62 steel to build it. So we have 1500 and then we're up to 2063. So 2063 minus, okay, 1500 is just 563. And let's do 563 divided by 62. That is probably not the right answer, geez. 2063 and 62. Did I? It was 1500, right? Am I crazy? <laughs> Hello. Hello, Sven. Welcome. Is Shungite a resource? I've never heard of that. Sorry. I was really hoping that I could, that the math would work out on this. Was it? Come on. Yeah, small exploration ship is 1,500. What? Okay, so I don't know why exactly. It seems way too high. Is steel really 15? Yeah, steel is only two credits. What are you talking about? So what I was expecting, <laughs> what I was expecting is that that ship would cost like 1,800. But it, it doesn't. <laughs> it costs way more than 1,800. This is a real mystery. So let's manually create this exploration ship again. 62 resources, build cost is 1,500. What the heck am I missing? Welcome, Sven. Blue Thumper, depending on your gameplay and the size of the galaxy, says that's a response to somebody else, sorry. Um, is there something at the center of the galaxy? How long does this game generally take? Oh my gosh, these games can take a long time. I don't know why this is reporting this value. Why are you reporting 2,063? Is this why? 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 And I don't know. I don't know why this is happening. It's it's treating a sixty-two steel as if it costs like five hundred. I mean, a total of five hundred sixty-three. It should only be. <clears throat> I would have guessed that this would have only been like. Um, well, it's sixty-three times. 2.27. It's about 150? Yeah, 143. Ah, oh, man. Gosh, I don't know why. I'm, I'm really, I, I wish I knew. But that, I mean, that's how it should work, right? You can do the math over these things. You should be able to do the math. I'm missing, wait, so 143. 143, what was that ship costing? Let's go back to it. 143 is what I'm expecting over 1,500. There's like a, a missing, but it looks like it might be an exact amount missing. So we can start. So this is 
23, 423 off, or 420 off. Why is it off by 420? <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know why. Why is it off by 420? What is the meaning of it? Is this like the meaning of life? Is it 42 times 10? Is this a reference to Monty Python? I don't get it. Nah. But anyways, you should be able to do the math. <laughs> um, I don't know why it's not working out that way. Uh, race bonuses. Let's check our race bonuses. Let's have some fun. Okay. I don't see any reason why the resources should cost more. Okay, so let's look at all, all of our things. We have, for some reason, we have all research up plus 5%. I'm not sure why. Oh, right, because of the 5% from human race. I forgot. Oh my gosh, our leader is giving us 5%. Wow, what a great leader. Fearless leader. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, let's look at the ship. Anything for ship costs. Diplomacy, war wariness, espionage, trade income. Population growth. Ship maintenance savings would be something which moves us in a positive direction, not negative. Um, is it because the price goes up after you use it part-wise? I don't think so. Because this is just giving you the estimate based on the, the current steel price. Um, as far as I know. I mean, may, it could be. I mean, I, I don't want to say completely... It's not, but <laughs> yeah. Were, I mean, the load of the ship end would make sense, but we didn't have anything on the ship. <laughs> there was nothing on it. There was no components, and I, I scrolled down to make sure that the only thing being used was the sixty-two steel, which is apparently what that ship type requires. I don't know why my research screen always has this lag. Is anybody else getting the lag on their research screen like this? It's very bad for me. Yeah, so it says on the bottom of the small exploration ship, this will take 62 resources. I mean, 62 steel for resources. So it's 1,500 plus 62 times the cost of steel is what I would expect, but... Yeah, the meaning of life was 42, Josh, but considering it's 420, I don't... I don't know. I don't know how to... Just, I'm really grasping at thin air trying to figure out why this doesn't make sense. But, okay, let me just leave it well enough alone. I'm sorry I can't give a, a good enough explanation about this. There's a missing 420, which is, I can't reconcile it. And I'm sure that if I posted this on the Matrix forum, somebody would know. But I don't. But that's how it should work. So anyways, there's a price for steel, which is two point whatever it was. And that means that the uh, because the demand is higher, um, so the cost of it goes up. And because the, the cost of it goes up, so the civilian economy is more likely to want to go and and get that resource because it's gonna get paid more for getting it just like anybody else. If you have a chance to go and pick up something which you're gonna sell for two or something you're gonna sell for five, you're gonna pick up the thing which you can sell for five. Anyway, in the middle of all of this, we actually got somebody, oh my gosh, where'd you go? Somebody has done a, a, a jump. There they are. A mining ship, so what is it? Yeah. It's backspace to like attach the camera. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Bounce. <laughs> that looks a little funny. <laughs> we should get another construction ship. Yeah, sure, why not? Oh, we're already crash researching this. That's good. Yeah, Dimitar. I mean, it was fun to kind of go into it. I haven't obviously. I I didn't expect it to come out wrong, but in theory, it works something like that. Perhaps the corruption percent is added to the price. I thought the corruption was just a knockoff from the um, the tax income that you get. Because right now, do we, do we need to know this? Okay, doesn't make sure just people are on automated. And by the way, we need more. I don't know. We need more uh, exploration ships. Two more of those. Construction ship also should be on automated. Yeah, they are. Okay, so let me um, unpause, and then while we're letting that run, approval rating is only plus three, but we need the money right now, so we're probably taxing at a, at a pretty high rate. And this is where Colony Happiness plays a big part. 
if you want to keep your colony happiness at five, then uh, you can't tax as high. Or alternatively, if you aren't a feudal empire, you don't have to worry about colony happiness being this low. Okay, so let me see. Um, corruption loss, it's at 13%. This is based on the current tax rate. Because our tax rate is 16%, it's not terribly high. Also, this is race, uh, related to um, number of people on the planet. Okay, this is actually, we'll, we'll take that. Memnar, hidden items. Oh my gosh, 10% industrial. Wow, great. We, did we build yet the research center? Oh, they built it over there. That's actually not where I wanted it. Let me get the other construction ship. Okay, they're they're all busy. Um, new exploration ship. New construction ship's already busy. As promised, here you are. Welcome, Miguel. I did see your comment. Okay, we got a research station. This is perfect timing. I'm gonna double tap pause real fast so I can get this guy. He wants to retrofit. That's fine, you can retrofit. He's gonna have to take the, the long way back. So that means our, our trade in, our research income has gone up, but wow, to 38. Oh right, because we have a spaceport here and now we have a research station. And look at that, this is done. So now we can get armor. We can upgrade all our ships. So let me just try to, do we have enough money to maybe crash research this? We don't. We have cash on hand of 1,000. <laughs> uh, is automatic good enough for managing the fleets to defend against pirates? That's a good question. And by good question, when I'm saying it like that, it means I'm not sure. Um, I don't, I, I guess it depends on your situation. If you have only like exactly enough fleets, I would manually control, I mean, if you only have like barely enough to hold them off, I would consolidate your fleet and uh, pick them off. So I would manually control your fleet. We'll leave it automated. Why don't we leave it automated here? Let me go over and, ah, that's gonna affect my other game. Dang it. I'm gonna automate the fleets when they just manually automate them. Vorn.red, why are these people bothering me? Get the heck out of here, you spammer. Good riddance. I don't know if we need more exploration. Oh, okay, fine. We'll do it. And it looks like we got a little bit of money, so let me quickly. Oh, 6,400 now. Das Brightsword asks, what's the largest UI scale available? Well, I think it's huge. Oh, Alekius is here. Alekius is here? I didn't. Oh, there he is! Oh, no lag. I get lag on the zoomos. That's so weird. I don't. Did you notice? I have a, a very high end rig, so I don't. You know, I don't have the highest graphics card. Who does these days? And prices, but yeah, I don't know why. I just get like you can see. It's like really, really laggy. Super choppy for me. That's just a mystery. I don't know why. I live with it. You can use the WASD in the research tree. I didn't know that for like the first month I played. <laughs> and you, I mean, because I get lag, I actually need to do that. Controlling the fleet seems janky. I see random ships al being alone around the place. Yeah, if they're a fleet, they will stay together, but the AI will leave um, some ships out of fleets. Now, what was I gonna do? After you're done re-retrofitting. Oh, it's gonna take a while to get there. Okay, this other guy is V2. Where are you? Okay, great. So I'm going to have you build the um, mining station here. I'm going to put it right there because I think it'll give good overlap. But the thing is, I did right click and I built this. I'm sure I built it over here. So that's a little bit weird. OK, let's crash research auto armor plating now. So weird to me that this is so laggy. Um, oh my gosh, yes, we want that as well. So that'll be the next thing. And I want to build research station as well. So we actually have a lot of things for our researchers to do. Once you give an order, you can set it to fully automate again, and then uh, it, it'll go back to automated as soon as it finishes its current task. I'm very popular with spammers. I'm very popular with spammers. It's true, uh, Josh. Does it lag when you aren't recording? That's a good question, August. Yes, oh yeah, oh clearly yes. No, I know for sure the answer is yes. I was like, wait, have I checked? Yes, yes I have. Uh, 
Ah. Uh. Oh, we're we're paused. My 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 bad. Maybe we'll get into one more construction ship. I don't know. How are you guys liking the game? I just I just love this game. I will manually automate them. <laughs> That's true. It's kind of a it it is a truthful statement. It is logical. It just sounds funny. Welcome Raven's Path. Just got the game. Play after messing around with the resolution for a bit. Still need to press Alt Enter to get past the black screen. Ugh. I didn't know about that one. But so excited to play and learn this game. Yeah, if you have any questions, Raven, uh, just let me know in the chat. I'll go over anything that you're kind of curious about. We're just gonna hang out and have have some fun. No real objective with this. Yeah, welcome, Lucky. I somehow didn't see you. I then I looked up and no, there's the wrench right next to your name. Who made that guy moderator anyway? Okay, good. So our armor plating is done. Research labs is going to be a pretty expensive research. I mean, yeah, tech to research, but it's going to have a massive impact. So the, right now this is thirty-eight. Now thirty-eight is. 12 and the next one's 15. So 12, 12 and 12 is the 36, 36. Oh, it's 38. Oh, right. We have plus 5%. So anyways, the, the research, I mean, it's easy to calculate what this is, right? So 52 is 14 from po population. That's just from your population. They generate like raw research. And then all the other research, generally the most of it is provided by your um, stations. So we have a 13 coming off this spaceport, which is just one 12 um, lab multiplied by 1.05. And then same thing, we have two here, which is 24 times 1.05. Um, so that gives us the total. Now, the interesting thing is this will go up from 12 to 15 per. So I think we'll see an increase of three here and an increase of six, or maybe it's seven here. So we're expecting to see an increase of, a, of about 20% to our research when we get this tech, which is pretty important. Oh, August, you're playing on Linux? Oh, wow, Ubuntu, I see. I was able to get this running easily in Ubuntu, which was not the case for Universe, so definitely happy so far. That's great. Somebody else saw said that they were playing on Linux. I don't remember what it was, so. But I know that I, I think, I don't wanna say things because it, it might be revealing um, beta stuff, but. I can at least say that the developers seem to have a very positive attitude towards trying to support Linux. Like they would like, they, they have no reason to like want people not to be able to do that. Which is very good. And you can see that the money, like the, almost all the money you're making in the beginning of the game is just, I mean almost the whole game, like all the time, the money you're making is pretty much all based on the private economy. So we are making from, there it is. Yeah, so we are making 5,000, oh yeah, here's the bonus income. So we by ourselves make 1,500 a year. And then we get over 10,000 from the private economy building ships and stuff. That's the cash flow, this number that you see, this number, is meaningless. The only thing it is important for is if you are, oh my gosh, I've been doing this all wrong. If you're manually doing this, which I, I shouldn't be, but we'll just set this and forget it. Um, the important thing is you need enough income on your own. It can't be from the private economy in order to fund the excess, which is growth for the colony and, uh, and research. It's a, a scaling factor to your actual research output. This is just a linear factor, how much money you're providing versus how much um, is the maximum. So if I'm fully financing the research, oh God, we have pirates. Then I'll be at 53, but if I'm half financing, it'll be like 27, 26, whatever. Okay, so the Geminer intruders have been encountered. Now this is my trick for dealing with the pirates. Kill them with kindness. If you're playing a real game, we haven't even, I don't even think we've gotten there with the Xenox. We have only encountered like the story-based pirates. 
But if you encounter pirates of your same race, this is very important, of your same race, so we're humans, they're humans, you can generally get them to a very positive viewpoint very quickly. So this is, by the way, the time where we really need to start building uh, military ships. <laughs> so um, show me, pause, pause, dismiss, um, dismiss, no, pause. Oh, we encountered the Harkonnen security? Okay, this, things are going from bad to worse. So yeah, anyway, the, all of your income is basically from the private economy, but you, are, but you need also the state economy, which is coming from taxes of the private economy anyway. You need that in order to finance your colony growth and your research. Now, onto the pirates. If they're the same race as you, you usually have a pretty good time getting good relations with them. And what I would do is I would negotiate and always just give them tech and like 10,000. I mean, let me do it here. So I'm gonna say for this, okay. I'm gonna, just to show you what it means, I'm gonna give these guys the protection money. And then like they're, they're a little bit happier with us already. So you can see we're at negative five. All we need to do is get to 10, positive 10. And they will agree to a uh, non-aggression treaty, which will be a cancellation of your protection money. We pay a ton. This is what, 1500 a, a year? So it's a lot of money that we're paying for protection money. But it goes away as soon as you can get them to plus 10 and to the non-aggression the non treaty. So right now it's not available, but we'll just oh, we'll let this stay at um, this level for a little bit. Now these guys um, basically just screw them. We are going to decline. And that means they're going to come and attack us and kill us, but that's fine because Tortuga is ready for that as soon as I design my first military ship, which is on automatic, so it's been updated, but now we're going to call this the light. Oh, you know what? Let's call this the Corvette. No, let's just call it the Escort. We'll make them the military ship. The real military ships later, um, the heavy escorts, we'll make those guys uh, Corvettes. <clears throat> so this will be the Escort 4, because why not? It may be the only one of its kind. All right, we have a weapon which is 180 degrees in the front, and we have a weapon which is 270. So I want to keep the 270 face um, with the large cannon, but I want to switch this large, long-range cannon. Oh, you know what? No, we want to go with a, a heavier... I do want to go with a very aggressive railgun type build. So I'm, you know what? I actually think I will keep the two long range cannons. Um, we have 40 space available on this thing, my goodness. And it already has exactly what I want, armor and shields. We're actually ready to go. We're ready to build up a, a military. Once you have armor and shields, like one of each on these escorts, they're actually very viable as far as defensive tools because they can take some hits on the shields and then even if the shields are defeated, they can take a few hits on the armor and then just go back and repair very easily. And again, we also have huge 45% maintenance savings on these things beyond this maintenance savings. So it's like these ships aren't gonna cost almost anything in terms of maintenance. We just need to build them once and then we're okay. Is this a high class escort? That's good, August. <laughs> can you show the victory conditions if they are enabled, how they are split up? I, I really don't ever look at the victory condition desk, Bright's word. Um, I really like the game so far, but in one serious issue, my game keeps crashing, unfortunately, as for the current topic. Oh no, why is your game, is it, are you crashing when you're zooming in and out? Because uh, that is an issue I've seen, I've dealt with, and I think it's still present. I'm 25k in the minus and it's still growing, my private economy is doing well. The Ghost Fleet was in the next system over and offered their annexation to my empire for a mere 20,000, worth it. Yeah, they always offer that, by the way. Oh, spoiler alert for human playthroughs, so close your, you know, Plug your ears if you don't want to hear I'm about to say it. But yes, the Ghost Fleet is the human story mechanic, and they always offer for you to be bought for to I mean to be bought out for twenty thousand, and you should always say yes. I think it's just like you get a free colony, you get some ships, um, not a free colony, you get a station and some ships, and I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. You might because uh, it's not only that you're getting a few ships and the station for that money, which is probably about twenty thousand worth. You're also stopping having to build military to defeat them, and also um, uh, any protection money you would pay if you couldn't do that. Okay, so the, the high class escort for, and, uh, for you 
for dash u. High class escort for you is going to be complete. I think this is good enough. She's ready. We shall build her. Do I want to change any of the fuel mounts? Wow, the hyperdrive is just perfect. That's crazy. I've never seen that. <laughs> that is the first time we got it like right on the nose. Which means if I change anything, it's probably not going to be enough. Do we have... Okay, we only have two engines. I think the high-class escort for you is ready. We're going to build her. So, let's do just that. We have 25,000. We can build... Oh, let's get four of them for now. Sort of. It's when I go to a faraway thing, sometimes it crashes when it zooms in. Yes, this is what I've seen. Also, Ghostly enabled me not to pay any of the other pirates before I got to my third colony. Yeah, that, that's the point. That's very good. Uh, Trevlin, welcome. How far into the game am I? I think it starts on 2757, so I'm not very far at all. <laughs> or 56, maybe? 55? We're going to decline them because we're building up our military. We're going to go after them. So I'll put them all into a fleet, and I will automate that fleet. We'll see how the military fleet does automated. Ah, we're under attack! Will I survive this attack? Oh my gosh, probably not. That's a lot. Size, okay, that's fine. Strength, where's their strength? 88. That's pretty good. And they have assault pods, so they're going to raid me. <laughs> we're already down to 98%. We Apparently this thing just got upgraded to have shields, so it has no shields. But we're, do we're doing something. Go, go, go. Kill, kill, kill. Wait, what's what's going on? Oh my gosh! This is so cool! The Geminer intruders, who we are paying for protection, are protecting us! <laughs> this is so cool! They're actually protecting us! This is so cool! Oh my gosh, this is just a full-on fleet battle. Oh my gosh, it's good. We're getting these are getting crazy. We need to get over there. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh my, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Did I put a skip drive on this thing? Yeah, yeah, right. You can't... Actually, as soon as you get hyperdrive, you're not even allowed to build a ship without hyperdrive. So, uh, that's... That's that. Military ships, let me keep this up, just so we... Actually, it'll give us a pop-up notification when they start being built. Pirate raiders. Pirates are attempting to raid to Prawa 7. I know, but they are facing the almighty arm of the... of the... Geminer intruders. I want to say Gemini, and then I think that's somebody like who slurred it, like Geminers. Them Geminers. Um, you know, they were here. They were helping us. Apparently, they have now left, and they have raided the station. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wait, are they using... Oh, they're using frigates with strength 164. Well, that's not good. That is probably something we are not going to be able to compete with. Oh my gosh, what the heck are they doing? What is that? That wasn't a... Is that a railgun? That's our railgun, I think. Maybe that's the missile? Oh, did they raid us yet? No, they're actually going off for no reason, having basically destroyed us. They have decided to leave us alone. What are you doing, buddy? Get out of there! Okay, well, um, we survived that assault. I don't think our our military... We might have overestimated our chances against them, <laughs> uh, since they have uh, frigates with 170 military strength. We're building ships which have 37 military strength to give you... Uh, it might be better... Yep, 37 military strength. So we have 37 military, uh, we have a 37 strength, which means that five of these might be equal to one of theirs. That's not very favorable. Um, okay, so well, actually getting pr getting protected when you're getting extorted, not something you see every day. I know, Keith, it's it's not common, but it does happen. It's happened actually in my other series, I think, too. The uh, Hey, did it happen in my Xenox one? Okay, now we encountered the ghost fleet. We don't have enough money to pay them, but okay, show me. Ancient orders. That's twenty-five thousand. We're gonna pay them. So just pay them. Hooray! 
All right, a sign of good faith and gratitude from the dirt siders. That's what we are, dirt siders. Do you have a top tip or two for learning the game? Raven, the way I did it is I really did set almost everything on automated for my first playthrough, and all I did was manage, I, I, I set everything to um, this, this option where it says suggest. And then it, it kind of, the advisors will ask you if you want to do things. And when they're asking you if you want to do something, you get the notion that it might be a good time to do it. And you can kind of like start to feel out when it is a good time to build like mining stations. Or if you want, you don't even have to feel it out. You can just always trust them. And always, a castle, every station with Castlon should get a station because Castlon is just very important. Uh, we were one people united against the terrible ancient enemy, the Shakhtar. I think it's Shakhtari. <clears throat> the Shakhtar might be a different people. They killed our people, destroyed our ships and our worlds and tore space itself apart. Ah, we learned to survive in space. We were part of a clan called the Eighth Fleet. And, okay, eventually they uh, got separated from us. Um, and, you know, here they are. They found us again. There's something called the Hive, which is bad. We want to actually go to the location of this since now we own it. Dismiss. You know, there's almost an argument to be made that it might be worth just scrapping this thing for tech or whatever. Uh, it does have a lot of interesting stuff, but it's quite powerful, so I think I'll leave it. And where are the ships it comes with? I assume that I got some ships. Yes, I did. Where are these ships? They are... Here, here, here. Oh, right. They're all in the system. Okay. Fair enough. We'll go back into Tuprawa. Yeah, that's right, we're kind of engaging these Hakonish security guys. And we're, we're trying to get a fleet together, so let's actually do that. I will. I have it on manual creation of fleets. So let me uh, just throw all these guys into a fleet. Create a new fleet. Join, join, join. Uh, just get everyone to join eventually. So now my first fleet is a you know, it's somewhat there. This fleet, I'm going to leave on defend. Automatic defense. No, 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 not. Okay, go back. <laughs> no, with the home base, I don't want it. Not within ghost fleet. No. Like, set this as your home. Okay, they're gonna guard that. If I stop now. Well, here, let me give them the owner first to, to kill one of these guys. What are they doing? Uh, you know what, I'll probably just actually have them guard this. So refuel here and then they'll be here so they can just very easily defend the station. So this is a pretty important station. It's my refueling station. Here we are. Uh, we discovered the Buscarians, we're just going to dismiss that. Which means, of course, it's tied to an independent trader entering the... Okay, so sorry, let me catch up on chat. I got carried away looking at the ghost fleet and all that. And, oh, I gotta, I gotta take off my button up. Do the pirates use the special text of their race? Um, that's a good question. They generally have the tech which is advanced for anybody. They use, like, super tech. Which is why it is an advantage to uh, to get their ships, because they usually have pretty powerful ships. I think it, the idea is that they've salvaged some of these like abandoned ships that you can find throughout systems. Um, my ghost fleet was larger than yours. Did they get different amounts each time? Yes, they do. It's I, I think it's random, and I think it's actually based on what they built from the time from when you started the game, and then you discovered them. They're actually building those ships. They probably start with something on their own, but I don't know, because I, I actually haven't looked at the game with the game editor at Game Start to go over and see what they start with. But yeah, actually, they must start with those ships on random, or they must start with some some ships that are easy to capture right away, because those are ships that have like tech 
you know, for anybody. Uh, excuse me real fast. Let me just step away, uh, get a drink of water, and come back. So give me a second. Okay, let me read the chat and just kind of catch up on everything. I also have with me, I brought a snack back. These are sensibly sweet sesame thins. Cholesterol free, gluten free. Ingredients, sesame seeds, glucose syrup, sugar. <laughs> it wasn't enough just to have sugar. There was glucose syrup in there as well. It may contain traces of nuts and or peanuts. What well, is sesame? Seeds. I mean, what do you expect? Okay, so let me read now. Um, do you have a tip or two? To cover that one. Tortuga going to the red for new ships. Isn't that new? Yeah, we're okay. We made it up to 4,000 in our bank account. Ugh. Oh, they melted together. Oh, no. Tearing space apart doesn't seem like a good time. Well, you never know, Periapsis. We haven't. That's just speculation since we've never done it before. Maybe it's just fine. I don't they consider aren't black holes technically considered tearing space apart or it's just a singularity so we don't really even know how to define it mm. oh my gosh they're completely stuck you found some type of fluid in your home system Trevlin that's that's seriously amazing <laughs> I think the chances of that are well it's one divided by the number of systems right so one in 700 if you're doing the default start it's pretty crazy um, Steven asks, what quality planet would you recommend to colonize at? I recommend not the quality of the planet, but the total suitability should be over plus 25, I'd say. If it's not over plus 20, then you're going to have a negative on your income. So plus 20 is technically viable. I just prefer to add a little more padding, so I'd be plus 25. Um... The home base is still has the ghost fleet station. They will go automatically defend it. Yeah, I turn. I try to turn that off, Halo, because I don't want them to defend that. <laughs> um, they probably did it to make sure the sugar wasn't the first ingredient. I see. Tricky. I personally wouldn't call a black hole a good time, but to each their own, I suppose. See, the thing is, how can you tell? I've never tried. Have you been in a black hole? I haven't been in a black hole. Maybe it's a lot of fun. You know, the whole idea about like black holes being wormholes that you just travel through and all that. Nobody's ever come out of one and said, hey, it's not a good time in there. So how can we tell? Oh, no, oh, that is very hard. Very good, but it's going to break my teeth. 
Who are the Biscarans? They suck. That's the analysis. TLDR, they suck. They're very aggressive. They're very xenophobic. They hate everyone. They go for, you know, military first. We'll, we'll probably be big friends of theirs, considering, uh... Wait! Biscarans? Oh, that's the independent one. I was gonna say, didn't we create the Biscaran Nincapoops? <laughs> They're out there somewhere. <laughs> See if we see notice now the lag is gone. I don't understand it. So we need uh, 3,800 for this and we only have 3,600. So we just need to wait a couple more ticks and then we'll be back up. There's a theory that you can never even enter them since time itself gets wonky. You can't disclose your sources but you have a good authority. The black holes are not fun. Oh my goodness. So we found another abandoned base. Apparently this was down here the whole time. There's, I wouldn't say ominous music, but maybe music that, okay, yeah, it's probably a little bit ominous. We'll investigate. Uh, it's heavily damaged and inoperable, but it could be repaired. Wow, wow, this is a lot of space stations. I don't think we need all these, but okay. Sounds good. New tech completed by final orders for 8th Fleet. What? Our recent acquisition of final orders for 8th Fleet has completed the following... A recent acquisition of the or oh right 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 this is a uh, acquisition of the ghost fleet so we got early beam weapons so that's not really one I want but it's useful to get traders tell us the nearby colony fine 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 my benevolent buscarns are good friends to everyone <laughs> yeah, right. it's not possible I don't believe it um three construction ships that's a lot of construction ships. No, we actually have a, a fight over, a fighting chance, I should say, over here. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so this is the Geminar invaders. They're trying to escape. And they have done no damage to the enemy, so I'm not going to care about going over there to assist them. Meanwhile, our exploration ships are around and exploring these things, so if you just rest your cursor on it from zoomed out far enough, it'll tell you where it is, so that's apparently where it is. And what do we have here? We found a tar and incense. By the way, I'm still amazed that somebody found a centabia fluid in their home system. That's that's seriously insane. And this is why the game is so great. They don't prohibit that. I actually really like... Okay, it's very unlikely. But it, it the whole gameplay changes. It's really cool. And then, but that's why Das Tactic calls this a space opera. It's really a gal galactic simulation more than it is like a 4X game. It does fit the 4X genre like description very nicely. But there's also like this idea that you don't play it. The, in theory, you really shouldn't play it the same way. You should be playing it uh, differently. More exploration ships. So I think that that is good to do. We're still building those escorts, which are what? What are the escort names again? Forget their name. It's the uh, high class escort for you. That's right. Another one more. Okay, I'll build one more. That's I can be enticed to build one more. <laughs> we have like no this stupid research. By the way, how many days left on this? Hundred days left. Well, we can cut in half. Let's do that. It's gonna be a nice boost. To true, are you using an Nvidia GPU? I am. Yes. I think that they have reported some issues with those, right? Or... Mm. I mean, ses sesame and glucose is a pretty good combination. I was really happy, um, just a side comment, to see da uh, Quill18 start a series on this. <laughs> well, it's just the for you. You can interpret it any way you want, Periapsis. Hack class is in the name. We, uh, you know, we don't make any uh, claims. You accept it as is. What are we under attack by? Where? Whoa, 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 whoa. They showed up here? Raid feudal Earth spaceport? How dare you? That's actually a pretty bold move. Oh my god, my spaceport. I forgot to upgrade it. Oh god, oh god, no. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, well, uh, <laughs> due to some, <clears throat> excuse me, due to some ship design mishap, which is, if I have to confess, completely my own fault, I neglected to upgrade my spaceport to have anything as far as defense goes. We shall, shall not make the same mistake again. Like, one of these... Um, uh, what do we have as far as static energy usage? I guess... Okay, we have the one reactor, two energy collectors, three crew systems, which we need. Basic cargo, I guess we can cut that down by one? We need the space. What are we storing there right now? Can we get away with, with cutting it in half? <clears throat> um, so I believe that this is the same stockpile, right? 672, 462. 672, 462, yeah. Let's try to cut down one cargo. I don't know if this will work. <clears throat> oh god, the sesame's getting caught in my throat. It was a bad, it was a terrible, terrible decision. That planet looks pretty nice, actually. Yeah, Keith. I think the graphics in this game are pretty good. It's, uh, they, some people are giving it a lot of flack. I just don't understand that myself. So we'll minimize the... Uh, get rid of one of these. Saves us a little bit of space. <clears throat> Two shields and one armor. Yep, that's what we can get. That should be better. Your empire already has his name. Okay, uh, let's do number three. Okay, let's do number four. Three. Okay, good. So SSP2 is being used by the new station that we acquired from the, the, um, the human pirate people, whatever they were called, Ghost Fleet. So let's upgrade this one to the, well, let's wait for it to be destroyed first, since I just neglected to build any kind of defenses, which is somebody else's fault, I'm sure. Otherwise, I probably want to go back and guard this. <laughs> Ouch. I mean, if he stays around long enough, we can get back in time. He's go He's leaving! Awesome. Okay, well, there you have it. We have our research stations. We have a new spy, which I should probably get going uh, on that. And we have no money, which is horrible. One sec. Okay, good. And let's see. Well, I can upgrade this now. Oh, it's already, it's already being upgraded. See, the moment I got my new space station, the people are like, we meant to do this the whole time. Blackfang says he forgot the entire northern part of his empire, so it all got raided by the, to the ground by pirates. I that's first of all that is why I leave uh, the there's the retrofit. I always leave this on a automatic because I I pretty much always forget. Anyways, it looks like after sending them all over here, now first fleet is needed back over there. So we'll go back and refuel here, and we'll use the refueling as a means of also getting the fleet back together. Yep, there they go. Zoom. Yeah, and this thing is actually up and working now. It doesn't have good shields yet, but hey, we'll get there eventually. We're up to almost 3 billion people, which is great. Is there a way to get a fleet to gain new ships and on... On fleet, is there a way to have a fleet guard a station? Yeah, so Trevlin, if you click on your fleet and you control, hold the control key down and then right click on a station, you get a bunch of different options. If you just right click, I think the default option is refuel, which is what I did here in this case anyways, but you can get them to guard the station. Now they're also on a, well, they're not, are they? Control one, what are they doing? Where is this? Where is this happening? Oh. Well, that's... Um... A problem. <laughs> <I have> a 
A uh, ship which is stuck inside the planet. We'll just pretend we didn't see that. <laughs> I don't think that that is intentional. <laughs> um, they're, they're trying to get in there, too. They're, look, at they're trying to get in there. That's okay. We'll just have them go back somewhere else. Okay, let me give them manual move orders. And Okay, if you want to, like, don't take my word for it, but I think that it would be better if there was manual orders, uh, the ability to queue manual orders. Just by holding shift down, you can queue up multiple different waypoints. Currently does not happen, it's not possible. But I think if, oh my gosh, it's pretty good. Uh, if the developer also thinks other people besides Tortuga think that's a good idea, it may happen that he puts that in. Oh, so they did... The Hakuna Security have raided our base. Oh, they did, they did. okay. They, they, they did raid the, the spaceport. Fair enough. Kind of saw that coming. Um, by the way, it's Shift-Q and Shift-E to change your um, the direction that you're facing. So North. I usually use Galactic North. Complete construction of abandoned base. No, I don't want to do that quite yet. It's just one more base I'm going to pay maintenance on. We have no money. New super precision technology. That's right. So my four, my forces have actually done that, though. That's the good news. And now we can go and tell them to attack this. The attack music is playing, so they think that we're attacking. <laughs> Here we go. We're going in. Oh, we're doing some damage. Shields are failing. Oh, we got him. We got him. Get him. Get him. Yes. Yes. Victory. Take that. You scum. You villainy. You rush of negative traits. Good. We, we can actually upgrade these guys. I don't think I want to upgrade all of them. The high escort for you is just, you can't get, you can't design a better ship than that. But I do think we should be, uh, have the option to repair these. So let me put them on the defend roll. Yeah, they're still assigned there. How do I switch over their home base? Right. I want to set it to somewhere else. I know it's here somewhere. I, I've done this before. Where was it? It was here, actually. Right click. Oh, okay, there it is. Set home base to that. That's good. So now they will defend within few. Okay, perfect, perfect. That's great. In the meantime, we're getting our railgun weapon upgrades. We cannot afford the upgrade because we only have. We only have two, we have a lot of money. We have plenty of money. Lots of money. Negative 75 money. Oh, 5,000. Just like that, 5,000. You can see the civilian economy basically pays for everything. Go to the place and click, yeah, okay, got it. What's a fast way to merge newly created ships into fleets? What I do, Harvester, is if you can go to your military ships, you can just click on one and then shift click. You get all these and then there's a join ships to one of the existing fleets. I only have one fleet, so it only gives me this option. But if there's more than one, you can click this and it'll bring up all the different fleets. Otherwise, you can create a new fleet by clicking this. Um, I guess I sh No, I don't want to build that. I'd rather crash research my military. We got to get up and running. Pay the cost. So, by the way, I forgot to go back and actually do this. I told you, oh, the great... What are the Geminer? I attacked the Geminer intruders. No, I attacked the wrong people. Ah, that was so stupid of me. Okay, so I attacked the Geminer intruders, and that's they were there trying to attack the Hakonish security that was there. So now I have a, a bad situation where we're not going to be able to become friends with them. But I wanted to show off my little strategy where you can get to be friends with them by giving them money and giving them this tech, but now we're just going to have to deal with them as an enemy forever. If I come across another human opponent, then we'll, you know, we'll 
we'll try to enact this strategy. So the, the good news is I'm no longer paying for anybody's pirate expenses. <laughs> but the bad news is I probably have a bad reputation. Nope, my reputation's fine because I only violated it against pirates. Okay, railgun weapons are researched. Um, proton ionization is like almost done. I must have gotten some of this tech. 3,500, that, that far. Um, the next thing is stable warp fields. I don't know, we might even want better shields or something first. Yo, yeah, no, 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 we want this first, sorry. That's warp, I thought we were already going to Garax. We haven't gotten level two? No, we definitely want level two. Krypton, well, okay, I guess. Yeah, I just, just assign that, and decline that. Um, Hexadorium, which we don't need yet, and Tiderios, which I think we already have a source of. Decline building that. It's the same one. Good. Okay. Um, it's, let's see. Give me a second to pause. Let me catch up on chat. So what's a fast one? Okay, go to the plane. Okay. The Tortugan Terran News Network reports victory at the Battle of Tuprawa 7. Now for a message from our sponsors. That's great, Fairy Houses. To trigger the escort that you destroyed was a ship of the pirate year. Yes, Halo. I'm now I'm now aware. <laughs> Shamefully aware. Anything can happen in a feudal empire. You never know. These things just happen in a feudal empire. So now we're gonna be under attack by everyone. But the good news is, like I said, we're not gonna be paying any more pirate fees. Even though I could have been not paying pirate fees pirate fees without doing that. Also get the first group to repair. I'm going to get them to refuel and repair, which is mainly to repair, since that, it looks like we have some ships which are damaged. Decline that, uh, dismiss that. Everyone, uh, so we'll just do a public service announcement that everyone, every civilian ship is on its own. Every man for himself at this point. Our spaceport at least is doing great. Three construction ships, that's too many. I think, I feel like the game does tend to overbuild construction ships. We'll do one and get two more. Actually, I'm not going to build more um, high-class escorts yet. The high-class escort for you is on short supply. Well, the new strategy is mur murder. That's right. <laughs> I think you get that tech mostly from the ghost fleet. Steven, I think you're right. You discover railgun and torpedoes from the ghost fleet. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, there might be a random component to it. Do we have torpedoes, by the way? See, there's my lag again. It's back. Uh, see, when I get the lag, it doesn't even go where I want it to. Okay, so we got early beam weapons and tractor beams? No. Missile. We didn't get torpedoes. Okay, fair enough. We got engines, which is much better. Um, what's who's who's fighting? Who's fighting and where? Oh, they did jump in. Oh my gosh. Where are they? Where are you? Show yourselves. Oh, they're over here. I'm trying to raid my research center. Research center is holding out. Just wait for our folks to get here. We'll save you. Oh, they raided the research center because we lost shields? I guess so. Did they land troops? I don't know. Well, the base was raided. I didn't even see what they took. Oh, let me bring that back up. Um, but failed to obtain any loot. Oh, usually that means that even though they raided it, quote unquote raided it, they left before they finished the job, which is probably because my fleet's coming in. All right, here we go. Into the battle. Like, focus fire on this guy. Hakonish security. Get him! Get him! Get him! Yes! 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 Oh, man, we almost got him! Okay, uh, shift your fire. Okay, we're focusing on this guy. He's probably about to escape. Get him, get him, get him! Okay, next! Did we lose a ship? We might have lost a ship. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, this guy's not gonna make it. He's not gonna make it. Yes! We got one of them! Ha <laughs> ha! 
So our our humble fleet with railguns is just doing amazing. Railguns are super overpowered. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Pretty pretty fun. It's very fun to play. Um, we do want better. We I mean we have better. So okay, back to ship design. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. We have a couple of bombers, which is fine. I'm just gonna let that all be automatically upgraded, which means one of the ships I got from the Ghost Fleet must have had a fighter bay. Um, construction ships, I don't know what these need to be upgraded to. Do they need any upgrades? Let me actually check what the construction ship currently is. I don't know if we need any upgrades to this. Oh yeah, it could get armor and shields. Yeah, okay. Well, it can't get both. So I'll probably get armor on it. Because, why? Why do I think that? Because I can get two armor or I can get one shield. And I think the two armor is better than one shield. So there's that. Do rail guns ignore all shields? Yes. I mean, yes-ish. You can see that here, their shield, whatever, should be a shield something. Oh, this is particle beam, whoops. Railgun, uh, long range cannon here. This is shield bypass plus 50%. So they don't bypass shields all the time, but they bypass them a lot of the time. Um, and this shield bypass is a modifier on top of your shield, which has shield penetration chance. So 25%. So this one, uh, oh yeah, so shield penetration ratio is how much damage gets through. Wouldn't shields make it cheaper though? Does it? It does repair automatically. Yeah, it, the reason why I said the armor would be better is because if it takes damage, it will repair itself automatically. They're, if they have a command center, they do have some amount of command center, command center. I don't know why it wasn't sh showing down there, basic command center. This has some amount of damage repair, 0 0.015 per second. That's pretty slow. Um, I can get better engines. Oh, okay, thank you. Good, so there's a, just a, a very good reason just to click the upgrade button and then put on some things. Thank you. Now that upgrade, unfortunately, still, you know, once we get rid of the skip drive, we'll have 25 available, and then we could actually get one armor and uh, one shield. So what I'm gonna do right now is just put one shield on, and then when we get the better, the next um, warp drive, we'll put on the better, uh, well, I mean, we'll put on one thing of armor as well. So that's what I'm gonna plan to do here. We'll probably even take off fuel cells in place of making sure that we get um, the armor and all that. So we'll do that. Okay, exploration ship probably needs a similar upgrade to proton engines now. And she is 25 light, but she doesn't have, <laughs> whoops. Kind of neglected to do this on all our ships apparently. But perfect, we, we saved, I knew exactly what was gonna happen, right? We planned ahead that the armor and the shield was going later. And now that's done. Wooden shields, oh, yeah, sorry, you can get better engines, do railguns, nor our shields, warp fields are better simply for the economic benefit, allows you to crash a lot more research when the civ economy fills your coffers. Good point, Black Fang, that's a good point. Um, when you get these, some critical research unlocked, and it requires a ship upgrade, the civilians pay you for that. So it's nice. It's like a one way, one way of, of getting money. It's just unlocking tech, which requires civilian ship upgrades. And if you manually control the uh, civilian ships, which you can do, you can kind of extort them. <laughs> just make really expensive designs so that they pay you more money. Um, yes, that is a thing. So the high class escort for you, we are going to have to upgrade her. Upgrade her. High class escort for you two. Now it's not just for you, it's for you too. Um, that's perfect, because we did want to upgrade her to the to the two, the two model. She already put on a railgun, two railguns. Wow, this is, she's got a, a medium railgun. 
and a small railgun. Is this this is limited to 19? So we can't put a better one there. But we have a really really powerful railgun on the front. That's devastating. That's great. Might I even want to get directional thrusters because uh, with the 180 degree arc, you want to make sure you're pointing towards the target. I'm not going to worry about the very small amount of speed that we're losing for not having enough reactors. Although, yes, I can because we have the ability to <laughs> swap out one fuel. I mean, we have enough fuel. So that's that. It means that we'll, be, we'll essentially never run out of uh, reactors. We'll never be taxed. But this all looks good. I like this ship. She's good. I mean, she needs better fuel cells. She needs better reactors. She needs better crew. She needs better warp drive. She needs better everything, but it's still pretty good. So the high class escort for you too. Um, so those guys all need to upgrade now. And I guess I can do this retrofit for specific... Reconnected. The game had dropped. <laughs> now it says excellent connection, I'm looking over. So maybe that was just a momentary interruption. Let me know when uh, you can hear me again. Only seven years into the game, but because of that special resource, I am 200 plus money and plus 32K income, my goodness. I have no clue how to exploit this. <laughs> Thanks, uh, finish. You can put your put Mac guns on your capital ships when you get them. Mac guns? The stream didn't drop, Tortuga. Oh, weird. Um, I had an OBS notice saying I was disconnected. Um, I'm still going to decline that station. I'll finally accept. I'll begrudgingly accept that one. Let's see. How are? Yeah, I mean, look, well, our ships are busy, so I don't. It's not like they need something to do. Um, do we actually do all these up upgrades though? I feel like we're missing some designs. Um, like the spaceport. Let me just turn the spaceport on manual. I mean on automatic because I don't want to like deal with too many things. No, no, no. Okay, people want to see it. People want to see it. It's fine. Let me uh, upgrade the spaceport. I assume there's actually nothing to upgrade here though. This is one of the rare ones that doesn't have any benefits. It does because long it has long range cannons and we're gonna want to change those out. So the SSP-4 will have the railguns instead. And it did put them in a sensible place, thankfully. And the seeking missiles are still in a sense. No, it didn't put these in a sensible place. What am I talking about? They need to go here. <laughs> so they have the most arc. But we're over on weight. Right. Uh, that's a tough one. We need to get rid of 17? We need a bigger spaceport. Definitely can't get rid of any crew. We, ne we do need the energy collectors. I think, unfortunately, we're going to have to get rid of a seeking missile. Hmm. So I have a gigantic minus on cash flow, but I'm growing significantly in money. What's going on here? That is the private economy paying for everything. Um, Arbster. Let me get rid of one of the Seeking Missiles, I think. And that puts us perfectly below, so that's probably what... We could probably even get rid of a Construction Yard. That save us quite a lot of space. I, You know what? I actually want to get rid of a Construction Yard instead. I know that this sounds crazy, but now it is, it's too crazy. I can't do it. I don't know the effects. <laughs> Um, I really, I, I really do want to do it. I think it's fine. We're going to downgrade. Uh, I mean, we're going to, um, not downgrade. I saw the comment Steven said, downgrade the missile to particle guns. No, I want to get rid of a construction yard. And then we're going to put in, well, then we can't build as quickly. Yeah, then we can't build as quickly. So if we wanted to do that, we'll slow down the ship construction cycle. Hmm. Yeah. One would think that the civilian cash flow modifier should factor into the visible cash flow on the top right. Uh, yeah, that's a that. I think it used to in Distant Worlds One, even. 
but basically it's so it's not like there's no consistency to it like what they used to do i think in distant worlds one is you'd see a spike in the value up there but um uh, you know it, it wouldn't be a consistent income that you could be reliant upon maybe they need like two parentheses up there in the top like one which shows your current like steady income and then one which shows you what the civilian economy is up to but it's also fine you can ac access it from the f2 the economy window i am gonna leave this without messing around with the uh, without messing around with the construction spot yeah i've made my decision Okay, are your space station name Fief Mark One? That's a good one. That's a good one, Kurt. <laughs> what do we have going on here? Somebody's under attack at Feudal Earth. Hopefully, not inside Feudal Earth. Oh. Where's my fleet? Um, where are you guys? Oh, you're over here. And that's where they were when I took care of that other guy. Let's get them home. Oh, they're, they're on hostile def defiance? Oh, they're... I don't want... Go attack this guy instead. Although, he probably... See, this is the advantage. When you put the mining station... Oh, so good. The mining station and the feudal earth spaceport are both attacking this thing, which means although 162, it technically outdoes either of these, together they'll probably defeat him. Got him. I mean, didn't win, but. Um, silicon. I don't think we have that. Yeah, sure, I'll sign that. The attack of the little tortugas can be heard in the background. <laughs> they have returned. That's okay. I can push on for uh, a little bit longer, actually. Um, Aculon. We'll take the Aculon. So yeah, does anybody have any other questions? We're playing as the humans, and it's a lot of fun to play as the humans. And I think, by the way, just because I enjoy doing it, why don't I take a step into the research tree, especially when it's not lagging, which is great. The humans have some really good tech. You don't think that way, because at first, it lo you look at their like first three tiers, and you ask yourself, what the hell's going on? The humans don't have any unique tech. I don't think they have any unique tech in the first three tiers tears. Is that wrong? Nothing comes to mind. I have played as the human, so I should know, but <laughs> they have stuff later on. I think they have some defense port stuff as well. But let me, let me just scan here. More talons have their engines. Yeah, so the stuff here is Akdarian. Um, nothing, nothing, nothing. More and more talent stuff. Um, that's their. What is this? Countermeasure stuff, that's right. Sensors for the Xenox. We'll be showing that in the Xenox series. Carl, it says lag. Oh, good. So, yeah, there might be a lag issue. I, I thought that there might be, at least a little while ago. I thought that there was. Let me look at uh, stream health. Stream has healthy. Stream settings. No, yeah, I, I can't see any, like, how many dropped frames have I had? I've had 0% dropped frames, which is weird. Can you steal or trade for unique tech, or is it impossible? I don't think it's possible to get, Keith. I, I don't know. I've never been able to steal it. It's, I mean, it hasn't even appeared as an option to steal. But I might not have gotten far enough to test that. Hello from Brazil. Welcome, Alexandre. Or Alexandre. Ladies' man has showed up. What is the minimum resource percent you before you'd build a mining station? Yeah, I okay. So this, I used to have a very fixed formula for this in Distant Worlds 1. And I am not comfortable making a good statement about this in Distant Worlds 2. You can steal research and you can buy it too. Great, thank you, Black Fang. Um, but the unique tech stuff, are you, are you talking about Black Fang? 
Oh, okay. So he doesn't know. He hasn't gotten that far. Um, I, uh, yeah, so he tried to play 2,000 stars to crash. Yeah, well, 2,000 stars, you're not, you're never going to finish that game anyway. <laughs> Just play, like, 700 or whatever's in between 700 and 2,000. Um, let's see. Uh, what was I saying about this, though? The human research tree having no human research. Yeah, the only thing that they have, I think, is the better... Okay, construction, maybe? Do they have anything? Is it here? I, I'm trying to remember where I remember seeing the human indicator. No, nope, they only have it here. So humans have the best fighters in the game. Fighters and... Um, don't they have the best bombers too? No, is it just fighters? Yeah, I guess it's just fighters. And are they the best in the game? Let's do a comparison. This is 74 with maneuver bonus 48. So 74 size... Uh, maneuver of 48. This is 89 and maneuver bonus 36. I don't know, the superiority fighter might be better. Now, you can get better fighters at least at first, quicker than following this whole thing. Not really even sure. How much better are the human fighters? I've never done this comparison, so wait, look, first of all, let's see. 74 minus 22 is 52. So the 52 is the amount of space you can put on it. Yeah, this is much better. 63. Huh. 54, 70, 54, 80. So the targeting of this one is 10% better. Weapons-wise, it's 2, 3, 1, 0, 0, 3. 2, 3, 1, 0, 0, 3. 2, 3, 1, 0, 0, 3. So this one has one better defense thing, which is explains why you have more size. I don't know if you want higher I mean this you you could make an argument for it maybe but I don't know I don't know if the humans have any good tech <laughs> the humans have no good tech at least the uh, the, the Akdarians have their engines fixed so these are actually just straight up better than the vortex thank god and the Mortalons have their vectoring thing that there's one person that has the engines with oh then never that's a high volume one that's not a that's not unique and do the humans have any uh of the construction the weapon ones up here i get think it is oh yeah yeah here uh, they do have something okay good so they have oh it's it's um part of the the railgun line okay good so we can get synchronized fire hail cannons. That's what you somebody was referring to earlier. Advanced superiority is greater than superiority. <laughs> you have a friendship. That's all that really matters. So they do have this. I don't. Let's do a comparison though um, between the forge rail batteries and the synchronized fire. I don't think that the hail cannons are better. We'll compare the small size of this to the small size of the other one. Um, the DPS is. 15, so 14.98, and the range is 1570. So 15 and 1570. This has DPS of about a third less at 10. Oh, that's for the large. Oh my god. The damage for the medium is 20, and the larger range. Eh, that's not. So I guess the synchronized fire, oh, okay, 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 I get it, I get it, I get it. The synchronized fire is really going to be something you can put on your fighters. Because the hail cannon is available with the fighter size, whereas the extreme forge rails are not. So that's that's the case. So you can get the, the whatever fighters from the humans, and then you can put hail cannons on them. I think that's the, the, the tactic. I've never played the humans of the endgame. We've only played the Actarians, not even to the endgame, but to the late mid-game. Uh, where you get the hive people and all that. Alright, so any anyway, other questions? I'll probably be bringing the stream to a close in about 15 minutes. So if you guys have any other comments... By the way, I mean... Has anybody... Has, what's the farthest that anybody's gotten in this? Has anybody to, like, tier 4 research? That's pretty far. 
Well, the ponies teach that friendship is magic, and other laws say that magic is indistinguishable from sufficiently advanced tech. So friendship is very advanced tech. Yeah, I, I don't know. I know that this is kind of like beating a dead horse. I've said this so many times, just really repeating myself. But I, I think this game is really good, and I think it's going to be very good for a very long time to come. Um, let's get more military ships, like more escorts for you, too. I'm just about to get this new warp drive, which makes sense as a breakpoint before we, you know... Your spy steal automated tech. Oh, did they do that without my saying so? They are not doing anything because I didn't give them orders to do missions, but they are not likely to do any kind of stealing against just pirates. Pirates are pretty hard to uh, um, infiltrate. We need to find another... Um... Oh, we don't have any... No, we don't have anything. But we need to find another people, like another civilization. Like another empire like ourselves and then we can begin the uh those kind of tactics so the new railguns are really good i need to redesign those ships i think what we're missing honestly we need to go down to construction and get the improved escorts that's what i want next okay we'll get the improved civilian ships after that just because that'll give us a lot of money probably i should do it this way first because that'll give us more money and then we can crash research the improved escorts oh i just can't wait for the improved high class escort for you why can't I rename my home system? I think that you have to go into the galactic editor. The game editor, I mean. And then uh, click on the star. So the name of this star is called Toucan Sam. Exit the editor. Didn't work. Did I not save that? Okay, good. I want to make sure this research. So let's try that again. Game editor. All right. System. Toucan Sam. Ah, it's the Tuprawa system still. Ah. So I can change the star name, and I, but I don't get the change to the system. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if I've ever tried to edit the system name. But you're right, it doesn't work. Super cool question. By the way, Buck, yeah, that's what we're here for. Just hanging out, answering questions, having fun. Everyone's playing Distant Worlds too. Is there any talks about yourself and Wolfpack 345 doing another collaboration? And is there a Japanese War on the Seas series in the near future? Yes to the second one, War on the Sea, uh, War on the Seas series, um, with the Tokyo Express mod. Um, as for collaboration with Wolfpack 345, what would you have in mind? Oh, look, these, these guys are attacking me again. Pretty close by, too. I'd like to go and stop this. Raid Feudal Earth, how dare you? Sounds like a bug. Maybe, yeah. I mean, I think it's, it might be a bug. I thought that you could... So the star is renamed Toucan Sam. The system is not. Not sure. Huh. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't have a good answer for that. Okay. They are offering us a production agreement. Well, we're going to decline because, I mean, in for a penny, in for a pound. We're already committed. Oh, they're... Oh, crap. I neglected something else. Don't make the mistakes that I have made. We forgot to get any kind of defense here. Oh my gosh, our defending general is terrible. And they, I guess, thank God they left first. So, always get a person here and then garrison them so they don't leave the planet. We'll have that ready for the next one who comes. But I think they got scared off by my uh, fleet nearby. I'm going to pretend. I don't know what these guys are doing. Let's just 
put them back on defend and let me just let them do their own thing because somebody was asking i think how the uh fleets def how they work on automated this is one way of finding out okay so we got the expanded civilian ships that's great that's going to give us a lot of money oh my gosh we're up to fifty thousand. well that's definitely going to pay for improved escorts and we need those improved escorts I feel like I should do like a Futurama, Futurama themed human <laughs> one. That would be a lot of fun. So we found more stuff that we can explore and this is in a different planet. So apparently my uh, escort people are just going out there and doing their thing. Which is great. Um, and I should probably queue up other things. Point defense? No. I don't care about point defense. We only want more firepower. The more the firepower, the better. Mm, this is gonna take 6.5 years. That's that's a bit that's a bit long. Maybe I should start getting the better troop techs, and we can try to invade a planet. Let me see here. How many people do you have guarding your planet? Unknown. You are the bus, Karns. That's problematic. Why don't I just send an escort over here, a high-class escort for you, too, and get one of these guys to investigate their troop disposition. Or maybe an explorer. I could just get an explorer. That, that would also work. All right, you're surveying an asteroid, which I just don't care about. Do you have the range to get here? You don't. That's because I must be really stupid and I am not <laughs> retrofitting my ships. So upgrade and that'll put them on the warp bubble generator. Good. It gives us the 10 space available that I was hoping to put used for my armor. So save and exit. That's perfect. Okay, so you also need to get an upgrade. That gives us six space available. We can't do anything with six space. So that's fine. You just save and exit here. Um, high class escort for you too. Oh my gosh. Well, I guess this we just retire the high class escort for you series at this point because in just a little bit more time, 200 days, we're going to have the heavy the improved escort. Then we can do the improved high class escort for you too. So, let's uh unpause. Do we have another drop? Oh no. It says on my side, YouTube is not receiving enough packets. So we, we apparently had some kind of drop there. Mike Brown says he actually likes the Distant Worlds 2 music. Yeah, me too. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna play it forever. I'm probably gonna substitute my own music at some point, but it's not bad. And uh, by the way, you can put in your own music. It's in the data music folder. You can just put in whatever you want to any of those folders. Oh, we have fuel tankers now. Well, that's actually kind of important. Get a few of those. Uh, okay, so we have a lot of money. We're going to crash research, improved escort. That's fine. Let's get to the improved escorts, and then we can call this series to a close. Looks like the it's back. I don't know why I'm having internet issues today. It's most troublesome. Probably just need to reset my router. I haven't done that in ages. Speed test. Start test. I'm gonna test while we're doing the stream. I don't know if that's <laughs> advisable or not. You're still here, hooray. Yeah, I mean, it could be that my connection's fine and it's just on the, cl the client side. Did that other planet in your system turn out to be good for a colony? That's a great question. I didn't, I forgot to check. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, and yes. So this is a continental planet with quality of 60. Now that plus my colony bonus of zero? We have a zero bonus for continental? What the heck is up with humans? Oh yeah, I mean, guys, we only have a colony bonus of 10. Alien races. So the Actarians have like plus 35 for deep oceans. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, humans have a plus 10 to continental. That's it. So our suitability here is 20. That's good. Th this is good. This is worth actually going for. 
I probably want to wait maybe for one tech upgrade, but it's worth it. Okay, close. So we will uh, we will definitely colonize that eventually. And because I'm going to colonize it eventually, even without the better tech, I probably should just colonize it now, bite the bullet, and start getting the population up there. Now, I can't do that. I have to research some other things first. Like... I should probably get <laughs> tracking stuff. Uh, we need uh, this, and I actually should get the uh, resort stations so that I can finance more of my uh, eventual feudalistic ambitions, like expanding my feudal empire. Uh, and then we get the resort, so we can yeah, money, and then small spaceport, I think we need this. And forget, sure, we'll, we'll buy that too. We'll just get all the things. And maybe we should start going down the targeting thing, targeting track. Then what else might we want? I mean, I guess we can get these basic recreations things to start making people on our home planet happy. Uh, better fuel after that would be good. You can already see my construction, my queue is getting quite long. Uh, maneuvering, maybe. Probably I'll just go after that. Oh my gosh, we have, we need reactors, yes. Uh, probably, let me upgrade that as a much higher, I mean, it's so close to being done, we'll just do it next. Okay, let's do that. We got some new fuel tankers. Um, we completed construction of this. Oh no, it's asking. Nope, decline. Don't think we need any more fuel tankers. The following, we don't need that, so decline. Okay, we got improved escorts. Let's crash research this. I think it'll be very quick to, co to complete. It will take, yeah, it'll take like 70 days. It's gonna take how many days? 69 days. I'm sure just having, I'm sure I'm just having a bad day, says Barry. Um, what did you say, Barry? Oh, I played like two hours and crashed twice. Oh no, I think there is some, so it's just certain systems are unlucky that they're not, the game just doesn't work with them. And I don't really understand why it's something you'll have to, please go make bug reports. Like the earlier we get these bug reports in, the earlier that they can improve the game and then everyone's happy and Distant Worlds gets good reviews, which I really think it deserves. You know, they I, there's just a limit to the amount of testing that we did as a uh, on the beta team. Okay, we got the nuclear, that's already done. Which means now we have to upgrade everything. So let's just upgrade everything and then build some new improved high f high class escorts for you and then we'll uh we'll after we build some of those we'll probably call it the stream to a close there you run into any planet destroyers yet not in this playthrough obviously i don't play the mortalons so i don't get them by myself clan hawkins or go first stream of yours i've ever caught love your long format content thank you thank you very much okay so what is i doing here yeah we got to Upgrade these ships. All right, the construction ship, upgrade. Is there any upgrade that needs to happen for this guy? Yeah, the reactors, which I just finished. Good. So this, the reactors are bigger, I think. They're size three larger, I want to say. No, 23, 22, so they're one smaller. Never mind. I take it back. So we have only three spots available. Yeah, you can't do anything with that. We have the better engines. Look at these are starting to really come together. That's a good that's a good looking construction ship. Go to the exploration ship. We'll upgrade this one too. Uh, let me just turn this off because it is nice to look at their like look at that. It's nice. And I, I like the attention to detail that they have the rotating arms for gravity, artificial gravity. Or maybe those are engines, but I'm just pretending that they rotate, like Babylon 5. Does anybody else love Babylon 5 as much as I do? Not, probably not as much as I do, but somewhere around as much as I do. Anyway, great, great TV series. Childhood memories. Yeah, this looks good. So we have plenty, oh, look at that. The hyperdrive is actually getting to be pretty expensive in terms of energy usage. But this exploration ship is good has eight space remaining we can't really do anything with that but it has armor it has a shield that's when you have one of each at least you're set now the the main thing is this high class escort for you it's so sad 
but she's going to be obsoleted. <laughs> That's okay, because we're going to add a new esc uh, approved heavy escort, I think it's called. Okay, so we can either do the heavy escort or the patrol escort. I can't remember which one I prefer. Patrol has three engines. And it has higher ship speed and ship maneuvering. What? Is there no upside to the heavy? <laughs> oh, the heavy escort has better, has larger weapon, um, I think better weapon base. So let's just start manually this and take a look at the, where the, okay, so it has 270, a 180, and a 270. Doesn't really seem like it's better in any way though, right? Two defense, three engines of which it can use probably two. Um, otherwise, let's add as new the patrol escort. The heavy escort can only use two. Two defense. Two defense. Yeah, I don't know why you would go for anything but the patrol escort. <laughs> I don't know, this is just a no-brainer decision. Maybe it's only a no-brainer decision for the humans. Because I, I thought I remember this being like, yeah, there's the same weapon spots. I don't understand this at all. This doesn't make any sense. There's no, there's no, basically it's a no-brainer decision to go with the patrol escort. Uh, Babylon 5 was apparently written from, a, from the start as a single storyline. That was revolutionary at its time. I didn't know that, Hawkins. Okay, so our new escort is going to be the improved. Okay, I think we're just going to have to call this the patrol escort. Oh, let's call this the Corvette. That's what I wanted to call it. A Corvette. Just a simple name, Corvette. Now, we're going to do this one from scratch. That sounds fun. Let's go to latest per category. I'm going to trust that. It hasn't always worked well, but I'm going to trust that it does. So we'll get one of these, probably we're gonna want two reactors. We'll want some fuel cells, let's get some crew first. And three fuel cells, just as a guess. One energy collector and hyperdrive. That might do it, but I'm not sure. As far as engines go, I'm probably gonna to try to get three, all three, I would like for them to be faster. We'll put the one medium in the front, one small on the other one. We'll get one armor, one shield, and we still have room for the proximity sensor. And boom, we're done! Hey, that's really cool. We got everything we wanted on this thing. It is going to be a very nice ship. Very nice ship. Carl Gutenberg said, oh, wow, the game crashed. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Carl. I think we're going to have a lot of... Uh, <laughs> a lot of things aren't clickable for info in Galactopedia, seemingly. Huh. Oh, maybe because the game crashed? BSU was also a super good series. Yeah, um, so in my opinion, I, the mods I would love to see for this game is a Babylon 5 mod. <laughs> um, oh, okay, interesting. I didn't know that. I'd like you to talk more about Babylon 5 scripting. But look at our, our escort here is actually, it's even though we put on every, every hard point is filled, we still have... 20 um, size remaining. And that's the reason why this is a good thing is because right now we're putting on um, some some items which are just low tech enough that we don't have like the boarding pods and stuff like that. So it's good to have room to advance with the more advanced technology. So I'm gonna keep the proximity sensors on these escorts even though you might argue that targeting arrays will be better. Because they are pretty fast, they have good countermeasures just by merit of their small size and speed. So I'm not gonna add any countermeasure sensors, which is one, I mean, we only have one spot for them. It's probably a waste to put um, countermeasures on. Okay, so let me uh, save and exit this. This is, I, I think this is a great ship. This Corvette, you could see the Space Force uh, Coast Guard or Space Space Force Home Guard. What would they be called? The Coast, Coast Guard equivalent in space. Um, you can see them using these as cutters. Oh, that's what we can call it, a cutter. She's a cutter. Save and exit. So the cutter is now my new escort ship of choice. We'll upgrade all the previous ones to this one. And I don't know. 
I think that's good. Did I do the upgrade? So I upgraded these two already, or sorry, these two have been upgraded. The exploration ship, let me do that this way. Exploration ship's been upgraded and technically my research station and my small spaceports were not on manual, but let me turn them to that and then go to latest buildable. Perfect. Done. Space guard? Yeah. Like home guard? I don't know. Planet guard? Oh my god, I suddenly got lag. I don't know why. Alright, this is outside of our planet, which means we probably ought to do it. Yeah, now we can build all the construction ships and stuff, but you know what game? You know what I really want to build? Is some cutters. I'm going to fumble around with the interface, not know what I'm trying to do. And then we're going to go to the cutter. I'm sorry, the high class escort for you has already been... What? Only build one? Why can I only build one? Are we out of... Oh, we can't build any now. We must not have the materials for it. So what are we missing if we wanted to build this? Argon, we need Argon, okay. So this is a good demonstration of what, we don't have any sources of Argon. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> what have our exploration ships been doing? Probably looking at, they're all looking at asteroids. So go and leave this comment on the matrix form. Please ask them to add the ability to queue orders. <laughs> Otherwise you're just gonna get stupid escorts, I mean stupid exploration ships all looking at they're look at they're all looking at asteroids one two three four all f four of my six are four of the four who are exploring anything are exploring asteroids this is really stupid all right let's get them to explore different systems just by manual control which is just i think it's sad that you have to do it that way but by the way we should all get them to, to retrofit first Oh, you're already done, so you can go. Two seconds, I'll wait. Okay, you're gonna retrofit now, dang it. Um, you go retrofit instead, and then automate. Automate. And automate, actually, you're fine. I'll leave you on manual control. Space Wardens, that's a nice name, um, Barry. I like that a lot, really nice. Might steal that. Unknown items. More unknown items. Okay, fine. We'll we'll finally reconstruct that station. <laughs> yeah, Barry. It takes a long time to explore those asteroids. Actually, I mean, it, it could it could happen a lot faster if I had researched the sensor tech for that. Ah, got it wrong. Yeah, so we can get this resource scanner and the planetary that we'll get those eventually. But it, it wasn't in the short term plan for my my build up a massive military <laughs> plot and you know destroy all these pirates. Do you not have the 5k ore scanners yet? No, yeah, I don't have those Hawkins. Ancient Baskara Colony. Greetings, strangers. We are the Baskara Collective. Our community strives to achieve expansion and prosperity through collaboration and harmony. What? What? Wait a second here. Let me just go down here in Baskara. Ferocious insectoid race with a tough brown exercise. They are the most violent and aggressive race in the known galaxy. They excel in combat using trickery and deceit to gain the upper hand. Baskara and our untrustworthy allies. Instinctive lust for conquest and expansion is without equal. Most other races consider them to be completely without scruples and thus steer well clear of them. However, Baskara have a natural ally in the Slukin, they're slightly more reasonable close relatives. Greetings, strangers. We are the Baskara Collective. Our community strives to achieve expansion and prosperity through collaboration. What? <laughs> uh. Boring. This will end probably in like five or ten more minutes. So it's just gonna come to a close pretty quick. Just having some fun with this. Will you reach out an appendage in friendship? I uh, somehow, I don't know. Something about me just 
Yeah, I'm getting these uh the spider senses tingling. <laughs> I will embrace you as friends. What does that do? I don't think it does anything, but we can go pay attention. Oh my gosh, they're actually new to my strategy. <laughs> my strategy is invasion. But we accepted their offer of friendship. They actually do like us. This is very weird. This is very weird. If we were to improve our relations with them, we could actually... Um... Okay, take care, Bear, uh, Boring. I mean, Kobold maybe is a better way of calling you. <laughs> well, friendship is magic, Boscar Planet. Yeah, actually, <laughs> for .jpg, that's right. Does seem a little uh, suspicious. I'm. Let's run with this. I've never done this before. Let's, you know what? Hello, my dear friends. Let us give you money. Take my money. We're up to plus five. All right, let's wait for that to to set in. Wait a little while. We'll give them more money. Sign to investigate reported threats. Yeah, go ahead and do that. We gave them 20,000. Aha, we finished that. On to expanded space station. So this is what should give us the uh, resorts. Now it's gonna cost 15,000, but we will crash research it. Pretty much all the money we just blew on <laughs> the quote unquote friendly Baskarans. But you know, the game does these weird things. It, pre it presents you with a Baskaran colony, which our invasion strategy. No, <laughs> we're gonna, this is peaceful. We're peaceful, we gave them money. Yeah, I, I was actually, I was fully planning to invade them. We are a feudal empire. It's not like they're going to integrate nicely with us. But just for fun, we're going to try it. And by the way, I have no idea what we're maintaining here. Yeah, we're our troops are not having any maintenance because I may or may not have messed that one up. Ship maintenance, we don't even need to spend that much money on because right now, ship maintenance is, our ship maintenance is so reduced. Okay, we're under attack. Where are you under attack? Inside a planet again? Can't help you. Your physics is beyond me. While salvaging engine superstructure, we have made the following discovery. What? Oh my gosh. We've got 40,000 from this. My goodness. Now, the Gemnar want to do a treaty with us. Let's go back over here. Do they still hate us? They still hate us, like ferociously. And they are evil. But they aren't diabolical. Hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, Lucky says you can just send an ambassador. I think I have ambassadors just sitting by. Transfer you to the bees people. Go over there. We will be their friends. I really think we can make this work, too. Uh, decline. Yeah, we'll decline. We have a military. We might as well use it. For pirates, at least. Give them money to lull them into a false sense of security. <laughs> I just became besties with a pirate and got all that tasty pirate tech. Hey, Carl, you got pirate tech? How did you do that? I usually steal tech, but you should probably do it another way. Ah, uh, Tuprava 9 is under attack. Are we going to win? Only strength 87. I think we'll win this. Even though we only have a strength of 70, um, that's not... I think that... They have more staying power. Wow, they have, must have a lot of... They're, they're going to win. Okay, they, they can defeat me. Let's see if my fleet gets here in time, though. In theory, I have a fleet which is capable of responding to this. No? Defend targets. They're retrofitting. <laughs> I'm sorry, 2 pro one 9 <laughs> We have heard your request, and uh, <laughs> we're busy doing something else at the moment. So you're screwed. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I would like to do this. Wait, I'm not on... I am on automated. Defense fleet. Um, don't want to set the template like that. Yes, we want that. Decline this. Oh, traded. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. Okay, you can trade for the tech. That's true. Um, we discover Tancent Moth Fiber. Always welcome. Um, there 
is a child in the background who is calling for my attention. So we will want to get the spaceport as well. But what's our, so what do we have queued up here? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I think the, the we're exchanging one distress call for in the game for another externally. <laughs> yeah, put there. <laughs> it's like when uh, you call 911 and they put you on hold. It's a bummer. Yeah, I don't really care about that moth fiber for the moment. This is only going to take 122 days. Our research is actually doing pretty well for a feudal empire. But like I said, I don't think the empires are more flavor in my opinion. It's just it comes down to some minor bonuses that you can really overcome. So, I mean, you can play... I think the best one is still, again, the population growth. But... Why do they want to assign them here? Like, just go there and defend. <laughs> Barry says, go see to your kids. I know, Barry. I have... Uh, thankfully, my lovely wife is involved in assisting for the moment. Automated doesn't really mean they will do things right away. It means they will get to it when they're done with the other task. Like, you know. Anyways, we got a hidden pillar here. This is a good one. Let's look at this first. Investigate. We found 50,000. Man, we're making a ton of money through these little things. And it has armor research for a research station. So good, good times. Unfortunately, there's no other... Oh, there are resources here. So if we, what we're going to want to do then is let me grab any construction ship. And let me build the research station pretty close by. So that they have overlapping arcs of fire, ideally. Anyways, I think that this is more or less where I'll call the stream for a close to a close here. Yeah, they, oh, it's <laughs> shocking news. They've actually finished reading that base. Um, we finished that. That's good. So the small space force can... Oh, wait. Before we go, we might as well... Oh, this is all in automatic, so it should automatically upgrade then. Great. I will... I will let them upgrade it themselves. Decline this. That's been raided. Um, what would the next tech be? Getting frigates. Okay. Very good. Okay, well then, uh, that's it, folks. We'll just call it to a close here. I had a lot of fun. Any other questions before I leave? Ah. Ah. Trying to munch on that sesame cracker. Yeah, welcome derp. Welcome and hello goodbye type thing. Ah, oh, derp says, yeah, I, I miss this derp. I, this is really funny. Can you give them the location of Gamlek 1? They fixed that they they got rid of the exploit. Yeah, thanks, Peter. So I'll be continuing the Distant Worlds <clears throat> videos. That one should be going out in about six hours from now. Otherwise, you know, if I get another chance to stream, we'll continue this one. It's kind of fun to look at some of the details in a slower manner um, on stream, though. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Okay, I'll close it off here. Have a good rest of your day, whether it's a morning, noon, or evening, wherever you are.